uh, they chose this one to come out to. So uh, I've, I came into town to uh, to kind of host them. Um, but uh, let's see, looks like looks like Europe is probably about halfway through their season right now. They've had six, seven events. They've got a really big one in Germany uh, coming up in a couple weeks. Uh, Guni has uh, already had a ton of success this uh, early this season. He's got three doubles, opens, uh, championships under his belt. So he's got four total. Uh, for uh, for the season, and he is number two in the uh, in the uh, global uh, open rankings right now, just behind Jimmy Humans with uh, with five titles. So he's he's doing well. Not too shabby at all. He's got a tall task here in Damon Dennis, one of the most decorated veterans in the game. Gooney trying to adjust a little bit here with the fast boards. I talked to Damon Dennis before this match started. He said the boards are playing very fast here, which is how he likes it. How are the boards usually playing out there in Germany? Do you know? Yeah, you know, the uh, the Europeans, I think, in general have a uh, kind of a higher, softer bag. So uh, Guni said, uh, kind of coming in here, that he loves uh, fast boards. So uh, this hopefully fits right into his game style. I, I watched him in his first game uh, and had a real close one with, a, with an elite player. Ended up uh, taking that one 21-18 to get where he is now. Yeah, defeated Ralph Swan. Damon Dennis defeated Timmy Ledette. Damon Dennis comes in as your number six seed. The number one seed in the seniors division is Frank Modlin. He's the one with the target on his back. He's underway right now on court 21 against John Henry up 11 to 5. But let's get into this match. Damon Dennis, of course, sponsored by Ultra this year. Slick side down there into the pile. He's switching it up and throwing to the Viper R's. Trying to get a look at Goonies bags, but I believe he is throwing uh, some type of cornhole scenario bag. So five nothing, quick start for Damon Dennis there before that round. Todd, you found a couple days to come back here to the United States. What's next for you after this one? Yeah, so I uh, just came back from Calgary last weekend. I uh, had a real successful uh, event, first time out that far west in Canada. So it was a, it was a great experience. I uh, had, a, had a few American pros plus uh, most of the Canadian pros up there. So it was a great, great event. Uh, I've got a, a little bit of a break here, five, six weeks before my next trip. And then uh, over the summer, I'll, uh, I'll be going back and forth a few times to Italy. Uh, then Croatia, and then uh, cap it off with uh, the Jeez. Europe Open. Now, are you are you are you, are you are you flying basically from one country to the other one? No, no, I'm going back, <laughs> coming back. Yeah, so yeah. I, I'll say it almost seems like you're out of town or out of the states more than 50 <laughs> percent. It, it's it's quite a bit. I uh, have cut down my U.S. travel quite a bit. Uh, this year I'll, uh, I'll be the first time I kind of leave worlds early to go to Croatia. Uh, I won't be there the whole time. I'll just be there the, the first few days uh, to, to check that out and then fly directly to Croatia. So this is uh, it's really just an exciting uh, the, the amount of growth in Europe and in Canada have been absolutely yeah. amazing. Uh, we're the entire world, man. You're killing it. You're doing yeah. a great job. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Yeah, Australia last December, you know, we oh, were there I together. I definitely know about that um, one. Amazing event. Really for 2025, really trying to focus on uh, getting into uh, South America and Southeast Asia as well. I've uh, been talking to several groups in those in those countries and a lot of uh, kind of newish, uh, newish groups starting out, and they are uh, excited. They they. They watch you on YouTube and Facebook, and uh, they just they want to come over or have pros come to their country to uh, to meet them and play with them. So it's pretty 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 great experience uh, just to see the pros uh, interact with with the players when they go over to uh, to different countries. They they know the prize money is not going to be the same, but uh, the experience and just the way that uh, these these uh, European players look up to look up to them is uh, it's pretty amazing so nice shot there by Gooney. a hey, big shot there by Gunny getting the collect I think he's on the board now sometimes that's all it takes to get started you're talking about the pros and how they you know feed into it got one of the players there in the background on the right tornado Chris tornado well-traveled man he's uh, enjoying the international tour so Gooney's on the board with four nothing start let's see how he handles it he's throwing looks like BG witchers finally got to look at that side as it falls in the bag perfectly and Damon Dennis is throwing nothing but slick side. He's off to the left a little bit.
Gunny's got a very serious look on his face. Like, he's taking this moment with, with pride, you know? I like it. Yeah, Goody was uh, right when COVID hit. Uh, we we started our virtual events, and our very first pro international uh, virtual had eight players from uh, countries in Central America, uh, Australia, down in uh, and over in Europe. And uh, Goody was one of those original eight that played in uh, and played in that event. And I, if I remember correctly, he was a uh, uh, kind of a, a master of the virtual game. Yeah, I remember those virtual tournaments. They were a lot of fun. They helped a lot of players get uh, to where they are today. One of the standouts for me, Yeti Irwan, uh, she did mm -hmm. basically came onto the scene through the virtual tournaments and qualified as a pro the next year. Mm -hmm. My guy is Jeremy Frazier. Has had a lot, oh, had yes. a lot of success yeah. in international uh, virtual tournaments. Two-time champion, yes. Two-time. The, uh, the late Alan Rockwell as well. He was uh, solid in those virtual events. I think he won the first one with uh, our Norwegian player, Ivar. All bags down the middle and in there. How about that? Our first international social of the day. <laughs> 13 to 4. <laughs> Got some uh, trust, trust work happening there in the <laughs> background. <laughs> Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. <laughs> We're not in West Wego anymore. I got to say, one thing about West Wego coming down south, man, they know their flavors. Everything I've had here has been pretty flavorful. Got a chance Absolutely. to take on some of the ribs yesterday. Splendid. Love it. All right, so he's got a timeout here. He's got a shot in mind. How many air mills do you see them throwing out there in the European circuit? Do they have that part of their game developed yet? They do. Yes, Gunny loves his air mail as well. He's he's pretty. Uh, he he goes pretty high. We were we were talking about on the way from the airport how uh, when he was practicing uh, during virtual sometimes he was. Uh, his ceiling in his house was only about three meters, so uh, he had a tough time air mailing in in a, a nine foot high ceiling. So. Um, but yeah, when he does go high uh, for the airmail, it's it's high. Uh, one of the highest airmails in the game, Damon Dennis. Everything down the <laughs> middle, the international language of cornhole. Thumbs up and knuckles. They got that part figured out right now. Thirteen mm -hmm. to four. Gunny's starting to get into a little bit of a rhythm here and get nice and relaxed. So again, Damon Dennis throwing nothing but slick side down. That one's going to stop short for fast boards. Kind of a weird landing spot. Otherwise, that one would have scooted right on up. But it hits that dead spot and stays right in Damon Dennis's lane. Let's see if he wants to go after it. Looks like for the moment he is. And he misses his first attempt. This is going to be huge for Goonie. So far, so good. Up 6-1. Four bags left to throw in this round. Stepping out. Hard tilt on his bag. Ends up blocking the pile. That's going to force Damon Dennis to shoot an airmail if he wants to get back into this round. He is going up top. Hits that one clean. Same shot here, a little bit different landing spot. Mm. Nope, hits the same spot. Ends up getting three points out of it, though. Miss push from Damon Dennis. Gets Goonie first toss, 13 to 7. So kind of talking about the developing shots out there in the European circuit. Has the roll bag made it out there yet? Not yet that I've seen. Uh, I know there's some players that are uh, that are working on it. Uh, but, yes, it's it's a lot of uh, uh, airmail cut shots. and Or, I'm sorry, airmail straight shots and then, yeah, similar to kind of the development here in the U.S. with some of these new shots, they are uh, they're they're working on, they're catching up, and yeah, it, you know, there's some some real solid players out there that are getting better daily. Slovakia, the ACL Slovakia Open last weekend or 
Yeah, last weekend uh, they had their very first juniors event uh, in Europe, which was a pretty amazing feat. Uh, the the local the local group there did a hard push to get juniors involved, and as we as we know in in the U.S. early on uh, eight ten years ago, the you know the primary demographic was was you know a lot of male in the uh, 35 to 50 range, and eventually started to trickle down to the uh, more more women and more juniors playing. And uh, I think we're going to kind of see that trend like we see in Canada, and we'll see that uh, in in Europe over time as well. You kind of look at poker, or I'm sorry, cornhole like I do poker back in the day. You know, the parents all gathered around the table and they wanted to play, and <laughs> kids were like, can we play? No, go away. Go yeah. somewhere else. And same thing with cornhole and the campsites. You know, we, we let the kids in, and now we don't know how to beat them. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, it was amazing watching the broadcast last night with uh, the number of, uh, of of juniors on the on the show. Yeah, it's really, really cool to see. I feel bad for Chase Breeden. He's one of the guys from Kansas City when I lived out there. He struggled quite a bit, but ultimately it was a pretty fun broadcast. I think the juniors bring another flair to the game that we definitely needed. Fearless. Yeah. Although Anthony Aon, we spent so much time in front of the microphone talking about the seniors division a couple of years ago. So seniors always going to have a special place in my heart. Mm -hmm. I, I just love the way they play the game. They have fun. They interact with each other. They joke around. That one's going to be stuck on the side. Slick side, it's not going to fall back. For fast boards, there's really not much whole love going on right now. Yeah, Goonie started out a little slow, and he's chipping back a couple points at a time. To give you guys an idea of the PPRs right now, Damon Dennis with a 9.2. Goonie's right there with a 9.1. Both players have two four-baggers. So for those of you just tuning in and kind of catching up with the season, this is kickoff battle number two slash open number 13. So all the broadcasts and finales from kickoff battle number one in West Palm Beach will be resolved right here in West Wego, Louisiana. Broadcast start tonight. I believe we have women's doubles and shootout format finishing today, right? Shootout singles. And then there's one other one. I think one of the uh, national events looks like we got, uh, yeah, shootout singles, national doubles, shootout doubles. Yeah, doubles. Along with the women's doubles. It'll be fun. Yeah. I'll be front row for that. Catch me in the background. So Relaxing, finally. <laughs> it's actually weird for us. We usually come to these opens. We are nonstop the entire time. And then this weekend, only three broadcasts on TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, and ESPN+. Plus. Speaking of that, let's welcome in TikTok. How you guys doing there in TikTok land? Hope you guys have enjoyed the weekend so far. We're just getting started. Seniors action underway. But yeah, it's one one broadcast today for us, women's juniors and seniors. And then after that, we head over to the big, big stage. Another missed push there from Damon Dennis. He said he loves this style of board play. He's kind of struggling on these pushes right now. And don't look now, but we got ourselves a lead for Goonie Wrights. Crowd starting to gather around now. Yeah, I asked the, the two on the way home to the uh, hotel yesterday who their favorite players are, who they wanted to meet this weekend. And uh, uh, Tom said... Uh, Tony Smith was his favorite player. Okay. And then when I asked Goonie, he said uh, really likes uh, Mark Richards. He said uh, probably one of his favorite is Devin Harbaugh. And then uh, Jeremiah Ellis, I think, is kind of catching everybody's eyes these days. And uh, Goonie was interested in, in maybe meeting him this weekend. Yeah. Jeremiah will be on his way. I'll be more than likely two feet behind him cheering him on everything he does this weekend. <laughs> big, big, big Ellie fan. As I'm wearing my LE t-shirt underneath the hoodie. <laughs> Damon Dennis, that airmail is short. That one's on sticky side, though, so it kind of creates an interesting situation here, blocking the front and the back. <coughs> yeah, Goonie met up with uh, Frank last night, too, <coughs> Frank Modlin, who uh, was in Paris, got to play against uh, Goonie and Tom, uh, I believe, during the uh, WCO team event. 
Frank always gracious and generous with his time with uh, yeah. the international players. And you mentioned Tornado in the background. He is, he's been all over the place. He's traveling to more places. He, he and Sean Farrell. Uh, yeah, Sean Farrell is place. loving it. I love Sean Farrell's, you know, taking the younger kids to go to as well. Damon Dennis, another bag on the ground. It's very rare that you see Damon Dennis throw this many on the ground. That airmail had a chance to grab four. Instead, he's given up another one. <laughs> you can hear him let out a growl <laughs> as he's going to try and figure out something. 16 to 13. I would say Gooney is doing a pretty good job of controlling the center of the board for the most part. I mean, he's had a couple misses on the opportunities to maximize, but he is keeping the pressure on Damon Dennis right now. 13 rounds in. Slight bully there, forcing Damon to step out. Good push into the pile. These are the rounds that I want to see how these international players handle it. How do they manufacture a couple points? So far, so good. Just keeping an eye on the right side of the hole, tapping the pile, forcing Damon Dennis to make the difficult shot and push through. Oh, and he does. Big shot. shot there from Damon Dennis. This is the important one. Now, this is the one for the points. In for two, and gets first throw back. He is in. So here we go, 12 on 10. Damon Dennis back in control. Gooney show me something, though. This is what I want to see. I like it. I couldn't imagine flying internationally, coming to a place that you're not familiar with at all, and taking down an entire tournament with some of the best in the world. Give you guys an update in the seniors bracket. Frank Modlin will take on Steve Schrader next. Again, Frank Modlin is your overall number one seed. Steve Schrader, I asked him last night, he want to hang out for a second? He said, no, I have to go to sleep. I want to win seniors tomorrow. Hmm. So he's got goals. Can't sleep on Andy Phillips, though. Andy Phillips has been a surprise for me this season, throwing very, very well. He will take on Harold Norris next. Off to the side a little bit. Just looked a little off balance on that one. Nicely done. Gripping that corner a little bit. Mm. This could be a huge round for Goody. Oh, what a collect. Able to go over at the fist pump. Damon Dennis, mid shot, gives him some knuckles. Love seeing the excitement here. All right, so again, slick side down, gets the Oop, collect. One more bag. Gooney's still got a bag left. You get eight of them here in the States. Seven have been thrown so far. Number eight here for points, and he yeah, is yeah. able to go. 12 on 10 on the other way. That's going to make it 18 to 15 now. Great round there, gentlemen. Yeah, and talking to, talking to Gooney, he... Uh he was excited to, to come and play American players, and he's, he said he just loves playing all, all types of different players and kind of seeing where he stacks up against them. And he's doing well in this uh, match, not letting the, uh, the cameras nerve him at all. Everything in here, round 15. Off to the side just a little bit. You think it'd be an honor to get and one by Damon Dennis? I don't think Damon's going to go after it. I asked Damon if he tries that a lot. He says, I never go for it. It just happened to be the one time I went for <laughs> it on TV. He's able to finish that round, keeping the damage at two, but Damon has to go in first. And he is able to finish off bag number four, so he will again 
get first throwback, but this right side is where Guni has been taking the advantage. Great match here. Both players down their final few mistakes. Cannot afford to miss much more. Yeah, aside from that uh, early round, uh, Guni hasn't uh, given up too many chunks. Yeah, it started earlier. I mean, 11 to nothing start, and then he's battled his way back. Seems like he kind of settled into a groove and has found a way to take the lead. That one off to the side lets Damon off the hook. But again, this side has been where Guinea has been favored. Damon gives it back to him, and that is huge. This could be in to keep the pressure on. It does drip back in. Now Damon's got to be in or else Gooney's going to have a chance to win it on the final shot. It is in. Oh, oh it stops just a little bit short right on the edge. <laughs> Damon offers him knuckles, but at the same time, he's got to be letting out a big sigh that he's got second life going back down to Damon's strong side over here. Right in front of the Corn Nuts banner. That one off to the side. Good, he lets him off the hook. Right in between those two gentlemen, Riker Wells in the background. Riker got his debut last night and shined for the Missouri Maze. That one, I was going to say, that one looks like <laughs> it's going back in. It does get the drip, falls in on the left side of the hole. Damon Dennis finishes bag number four. And Gooney Wright's continuing to impress as we head into round 18. The score stays 18 to 17. How long are they in town for? Are they flying out right away or? Yeah, they'll be here till Monday. A little bit? Yeah, they'll be here till Monday. I uh, took them out down to uh, French Quarter yesterday for a little bit to have some lunch and do a little sightseeing and get some pictures taken. So they, they enjoyed getting out a little bit. But uh, they are, they're here to play cornhole. They, they made no, no secret of that. <laughs> they want to play as many games as possible. Uh-oh, that one's in front of the board. Luckily for him, he's only on seven. I'm sorry, he's on 18. Damon's on 17, so that's not Jeopardy lose the game. The problem is that is still in his lane. He's got three bags left to throw. Double D right now going to try and step out and leave that bag right in that path. Slick side down, takes away center lane. That's not terrible. But a blocker here could get Gooney back in this round. Oh, it rolled on him. And now he is in trouble. Damon gets the collect. There's a blocker there on the right-hand side. He misses. That's it. This could be in for the win. Damon Dennis could be getting five. I don't know if they've developed a penguin shot out there in Germany yet, but he has got an amazing attempt at it if it's going to happen. Bag is in. That's going to be a 10, and now he has to figure out how to get one in. He's going up top. That's not going to do it. Damon Dennis able to take it down. 11 nothing start at the beginning of the game. Gooney, though, how about that, Todd? Your international, your international works are paying off, man. Takes that one down. Damon Dennis takes that one down over Gooney. We're going to take a look at this replay earlier in the match. Huge shot here, almost a roll bag. We're kind of talking about it. Kind of cartwheeled over. Gooney gets the collect. Huge fist pumps of excitement. He was happy with it. <laughs> Two fist pumps, actually, yeah. be precise. <laughs> but there you go. Damon Dennis advances. When we come back, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to head over to the juniors division. Two of those young men in the background right there heading to the court. Ryan Trader will take on Bryce Forbes here at open number 13. 
West Wego, Louisiana, right after this. Life's most memorable moments, they can happen anywhere. On sports biggest stage, or even in your own backyard. For those moments, seek a world beyond home. Find furniture, decor, grills, play sets, yard games, and yep, even cornhole. Backyard.com has everything you need to make your backyard summer ready all year long. Backyard.com. Let's have fun. Roll that beautiful bean footage. Bush's baked beans have always been the official bean of making burgers taste better. And now, they're the official beans of the SEC. And the official bean of whatever that is. Hey, it's tailgate fashion. Now this guy gets it. Ah, nuts. No, no. What's Planet's nuts? It's not ah, uh, nuts. It's ah, uh, nuts. Because Planet's nuts are good. Planter's nuts. Ah, nuts. Cornhole is more than a game. It is a battle of skill and precision. And when the game is on the line, you need a bag you can trust. With Lucky Bags, our Surefire and Pro Sniper bags are designed for all players and those who demand the best. Our lineup of Lucky Bags are made of the finest materials and built to perform with precision and accuracy. Get your Lucky Bags today and experience the bags that champions use. Visit LuckyCornhole.com to order now. Throw like a champion. Throw lucky. Roll that beautiful bean footage. You've got the force field, the moat, the saucy sheriff. No matter your cookout plate strategy, Bush's baked beans make burgers taste better. I love me a saucy sheriff. Oh, nuts. No, no. With Planters Nuts, it's not, ah, nuts. It's, ah, nuts. Because Planters Nuts are good. Planters Nuts. Ah, nuts. Welcome, Cornhole fans, back here to court number one in West Wego, Louisiana. Open number 13, kicking things off with women's and juniors and seniors. We just saw a seniors match. Let's go to the other end of the spectrum and bring in some juniors. Ryan Trader and Bryce Forbes set and ready to go. I'm Wally Kassler, and I'm bringing in my co-host, Allison Baldwin. What is up, Allison? How are you doing? Good. I'm excited to watch these kids play. These are my favorite kind of games to watch. They like to make those dirty boards and roll bags, and it's just a lot of fun to watch them play. Yeah, I almost felt a little bit bad for them yesterday. The boards were a little fast yesterday, so they never had a chance to kind of play. Let's see if they mix it up here. They didn't get to show their court skills. Number one. Yeah, I want to see some roll shots and some great action. Exactly. Bryce Forbes electing to go with the earbuds and the, uh, I'm sorry, with the, the hoodie up. That's kind of interesting. I think we got sunglasses and hoods and all kinds of stuff going on right now He's on not, this court. Stop tugging at his jersey, though. I'm kind of wondering if you'd rather look cool than be comfortable. I don't know. Either way, it's working for him. Off to a 5 nothing start. Ryan Trader had a chance to broadcast last night, so those bright lights might have affected him. He's rocking the sunglasses now. <laughs> his eyes are a little sore today from yeah. all the bright lights. are hurting looking at that chain around his neck. Gee, where you get all that, <laughs> where you get all that money for a chain like that? You're winning all these cornhole that's tournaments. Good. That's a good point. I'm gonna start trying it myself. Big airmail nice. right there gets the hit, drags it in and takes the lead. Not messing around. So, last game we got a chance to see with the seniors, or the last game we saw the seniors on the left hand side it was Damon Dennis. On the right hand side it was Goonie. How about that? Here we, that was a great match. It was a Just great match. Live feed internationally. Let's see if uh, Forbes can own this left side and Trader the right. Right now, both players Oof. down the middle. That one hit, hit the, the dead, dead spot, yeah. yeah. Use that bag perfectly. Get it out of his way a little bit and still get into the hole. Perfect landing spot there. Trader not happy with that spot because he knows Bryce can go over the top and hits the airmail to wash out the round. 10 on 10. Let's take a look at this shot again from Ryan Trader. Last time they were down the right hand side. Big airmail gets the drag, takes the lead 6 to 5.
again on the end. Ryan Trader hit that shot. Round Coming number out two. Strong. So who's the number one seed coming into this juniors tournament? Do you know? Yeah, number one seed is Ryan Trader. He's got okay. seems like 47 open wins so far <laughs> this season. Been on an absolute tear. Started at open number one. Kind of shocked me even. I see him on a regular basis, and then uh, he's just kind of taken off since then, taking down Iowa, and then again, I believe, in Myrtle Beach. But he comes in as the one seed. Bryce Forbes, though, comes in as the nine seed. Defeated Anthony Eastridge to get here 22-6. to six. Oh. How about being a young kid like this and just traveling all over the United States just playing a game that you love? Does it get any better than that? Parents are exhausted, <laughs> <laughs> but he's having fun. I was talking to his dad yesterday and Mason Trader. He got called up to play for the Chicagoland Spinners, so he'll be on broadcast out in Vegas. Nice. So he was saying the uh, the one open that we could have taken off, now he's got to go for the other <laughs> the other twin. So it's a good problem to have. You know, you know everyone's going to Vegas except for Jake Brandon, I think. He's the only one that I know not going. Jakey Poo. I'll be, Sorry, I'll bud. He's sitting at home watching. <laughs> He's watching right now, too. Oh, what's up, buddy? <laughs> Appreciate everybody tuning in, no matter where you're watching. Facebook, YouTube, ESPN+. Plus. Hope you guys are enjoying the content and getting ready. Jake said we want Corey. <laughs> I think when I looked at the schedule, I wasn't prepared of how action-filled these Two events, as we call them, will be kickoff battle number two. Just the amount of broadcasts and championship matches that we're going to get to see. I, I wasn't really prepared for it all. It's too much to watch. I agree with that. Like, normally, like, you get really excited for all of the nationals, and now you get really excited for the nationals, and then you have in two weeks something else also that's really exciting because mm -hmm. you're just continuing from, like, the kickoff battle one in this case. So, yeah, it keeps everything fun and interesting. I just got an after-the-fact update here. Uh, Goonie was throwing slicky baggers. That's slicky the first European baggers. stamp bag, so it's oh, allowed. Okay. So that's kind of nice. cool. Nice. Do we do, do we have a slicky baggers graphic we could have thrown up, guys? Nope, truck, truck, <laughs> fall behind. We're gonna have to update our graphics internationally now. Pretty cool moment though for him to come across, across the pond, as they say. Yeah, Damon Dennis uh, was on the ropes there for a while, but ended up taking that one down. Speaking right. of Mason Trader, he's heading to court 34 to take on Sammy Soto. Can you imagine Ryan Trader versus Mason Trader to go to the king seat? Love that. I got a chance to see them play for the uh, championship match at conference, and just as you expect, there's a little bit of twin sibling rivalry <laughs> going on. So. so he's a twin? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. So we have two sets of twins both playing in mm -hmm. the division. That's awesome. All four almost as good as I am. <laughs> almost, Walter. No one's as good as you. I've actually beaten all four. Fun fact. Fun fact. There's one tournament he had me. He was winning 18 to 15, I, or 18 16, and I scored a five to end it. And they're beating him 21 to 18. Look at you bragging. There, I mean, there, there might have they're, been. They're just children, Wally. There okay? might have been a little caveat where he had <laughs> one less bag than I did. Could have been four bags on three bags. But either way, fun fact, I beat Ryan Trader. <laughs> and, and we always tell the story the exact same way. I'm like, did I beat you? And he comes right back, dude, I had three bags. <laughs> and I said, but I beat you. <laughs> We're not talking about that part of yeah. the story. We're yeah. just talking about the end result. No, I lo love interacting with these kids. The youngsters make me feel young. Thank God. <laughs> As I near my 30s, I'm stressing. You gonna let me? You gonna let me get away with that 30s joke? Huh? Yeah, I was, I'm gonna <laughs> let you have that one, Wally. Okay, I'm gonna let you have it. I don't want you coming after my age, so I'm just gonna give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Blocker there from Bryce Forbes and Trader makes him pay. Let's see if. 
Bryce can get the collect to get the two points this round. Slick side down, gets it. I was about to say that. I think he'll make easy work of that. Trader for damage control, and we are going to have a 13 to 11 score as we head to the right hand side. Forbes, first shot. Got them hater blockers on. Yes, he does. And they're pink. All right. Did not even notice. I'm going to have to borrow them. Next time they come to us, I'll have the hater blockers on. <laughs> we need it. We need it. Sticky side push. Did not go as far as he wanted it. He's staying sticky side down, trying to land on top of the pile. Actually misses the backside airmail. <laughs> Chat wants to know if we put the score graphic in front of the foot foul line on purpose. <laughs> yes, so we don't have to talk about it. <laughs> oh my goodness, hits the airmail, doesn't get the drag, stops him in his tracks. Can't believe that didn't drag. Look at his face. He's like, what just happened? He wanted that one bad. Let's take a look at it again. Not sure how it didn't go. Sticky side down. Ugh, it's a so little good. bit too look at clean. Him. The disappointment. Does get a couple points, though. 15 to 11. Yeah, it was actually a foot foul called on broadcast. I believe that was the first time it's been enforced where a bag has been removed out of play. So it creates an interesting situation. Hopefully the pros are aware of what's happening so i mean they should be paying pretty close attention to all of that it's been uh, it's been talked about once or twice <laughs> so 17 to 11 now ryan trader with that big airmail right there has been on a tear since then. Starting things off here in round 12 with the first bag off to the side. Bryce steps off the line, takes a deep breath as he's trying to get back into this round and game. See if he can pick up two points here with that bag off to the right. He does not take full advantage of it. It's gonna need some help from Trader. And now we're looking at a possible bar soap opportunity. Slick side down, going at it hard in the pile. Hits only Bryce's bag, gets it to go. Does not get the throw off the back of the board to complete the bar soap. He didn't even think for two seconds about that. He immediately was like, I'm going for that shot. Processes it right away. Big airmail gets both of his bags to go. Ryan Traders goes with him, so it's only going to be two points. But what a shot there from Bryce Forbes. Let's take a look at this again on the right-hand side. Up top, lean back, gets it to fall, 17-13. See those knucks? He's like, ugh, that was great, but you got points out of it. Fat Joe would be proud with that lean back. Well done. Call him Fat Joseph from uh, our hood. We had respect on his name. Good side-by-side -side action here on the edge of the red zone. Trader stays sticky to push the pile. Everything falls in. Score is going to stay 17 to 13. We're going to switch over to the women's division next. Sarah Cassidy will take on Vanessa Fillingham. Again, winner of this match will play the winner between Sammy Soto and Mason Trader. Sammy Soto is up in that match 15 to 2. That airmail landed short. It's off the side of the board. Interestingly, though, it spun the pile. Taking Bryce's bag out of play. And we might be looking at a those, ridiculous push here from Trader to win the game. Those bags are moving every time the boards hit. Mm -hmm. Looks like into the pile. I believe one of each fell. Yes. And this is an airmail or cut for the win. In for four gets to collect, only gets two. <laughs> Misses to the side. Papa Trader across the way grimacing. 
Knows he had an opportunity to finish it off right there. It is going to make it, though, 19 to 13. Neither player happy with the way that round played out. Two points away from moving on to the Kings Eat game. Everything there. I love the uh, rhythm rounds. Especially in the juniors division, the players do not take long to throw. You can hear the bags just thump on the board and go in the hole almost in a rhythmic pace. Kind of puts me in a lull sometimes. I forget right. I'm supposed to be talking. <laughs> Sleepy time. I'm actually wide awake today, which is rare for me. I'm, I'm ready to go. We get to sleep in tomorrow. Thank God, because I'm going to be watching every broadcast today, having fun. I had a lot of fun at the broadcast last night watching teams. Yeah, we were actually uh, hanging out in the uh, backyard.com section. Exactly. It was, was kind of neat. I like it. It. Re it really feels like a backyard when you first walk up there. Yeah, they got the turf down. Yeah. I, 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 I like what they did with the idea of like those little lights in the coolers. Yes. But you need to have like fake fire. You know what I mean? Oh. Like a candlelight, like a fake fire, and then it's like a barbecue environment. Oh, come on now. The DJ was killing it, by the way. He did a great job. Yeah. I agree with that for sure. Yeah, that's the, that's the backyard.com motto. Let's have fun. We that did. we did. I love the fire idea, though, Wally. That's yeah. money. I got great ideas. You do. You have, have to tell the truck to listen sometimes. <laughs> Sticky side down does not oh. get it. And luckily, though, he does not push in Trader. Right? He got lucky. I believe that's a wash. Trader takes a second to look over to see how his brother's doing. They know they're going to play each other if they both win. As I mentioned, though, Sammy Soto is up 15-2. to two. That is a match to get to the semifinal. Cannon Hatcher and Jacob Gore on the other side tied 8-8. Eight to eight. Zach Aiken 12-8 over Nathaniel Langley. And this is the round Trader wants. Sticky side down, forcing air mails. Bryce is off the back, kind of shrugs his shoulders, so that's okay. And in actuality, it is not okay. Trader has got the game in hand. One more bag in the hole. Good collect right there. It is all over. Airmail for funsies. But <laughs> Ryan Trader going to take that one down. He will wait for his next opponent. As I mentioned, it's going to be Sammy Soto or Mason Trader. But when we come back here in women's, juniors, and seniors, I'm sorry, action today. We are going to bring on the women. Sarah Cassidy will take on Vanessa Fillingham here in West Wego, Louisiana, right after this. Life's most memorable moments. They can happen anywhere, on sports biggest stage, or even in your own backyard. For those moments, seek a world beyond home. Find furniture, decor, grills, play sets, yard games, and yep, even cornhole. Backyard.com has everything you need to make your backyard summer ready all year long. Backyard.com. Let's have fun. Ah, nuts. No, no. What's planet's nuts? It's not ah, uh, nuts. It's ah, uh, nuts. Because planter's nuts are good. Planter's nuts. Ah, nuts. You can dash, zest, mist, and infuse. But may we recommend the just make the damn drink method. Behold, the 7 and 7. If this is your cocktail, Seagram 7 is your whiskey. Goes way up top and hits it! What? He knows it, goes up top and hits it! What a shot! A ticket to the championship and oh. hits it! What a shot! Oh, nuts. No, no. With Planner's Nuts, it's not, ah, nuts. It's, ah, nuts. Because Planner's Nuts are good. Planter's Nuts. Ah, nuts. 
You can dash, zest, mist, and infuse. But may we recommend the... Welcome back, Cornhole fans. Court number one here, West Wego, Louisiana, adding that Cajun Spice to open number 13. We're at the Alario Center. Wally and Allison here bringing in the live feed coverages. Brought to you by Backyard.com. Let's have fun. Bush's Best Beans, the beautiful bean company. Seagram 7, the American blended whiskey. I'm Wally. This is Allison. Court number one action, Vanessa Fillingham has made her way here to the court. She's getting some extra warm-ups, so we're waiting for her opponent to show up. Who is she playing? Allison, what do you want to see here between Vanessa Fillingham and her opponent, which is... Good cornhole. Sarah Always. Cassidy. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, this there should be a really is. good game. Yeah. Sarah Cassidy's been on an absolute tear. Took down the last open that we were at. Actually, took down like national number one. Like, convincing. Like, she killed it all day. She is ready to rock and roll this season. We're talking about who is going to dethrone Cheyenne Bubenheim as the number one woman in the world. It could be Sarah Cassidy. She's on her way. So Sarah Cassidy in the Michigan Marauders jersey. Vanessa filling in rocking the Texas jersey over there on the right-hand side. See there, Katie Bartell in the background. She got some maze experience. She was taking on uh, some players in the Missouri maze. She is taking on Elizabeth Tennyson over there on court number eight. Katie Bartell in the lead there, seven to six. Some other women that are underway. Riley Schaff taking on Ashley Bannister there on court number seven in the lead, 11 to four. Peyton Haynes. Taking on Samantha Finley. How about Peyton Haynes? 24 to 3. Wow. Taking down Sam Finley. That is a big statement win there for Peyton. Absolutely. As she got uh, her first broadcast experience. 80 courts in action here in West Wego, Louisiana. Plenty of space to walk around and enjoy it. We got vendors in the area as well. All Cornhole, BG, SIVA, Lucky Bags, brought from the live feeds this weekend as well. Shout out to Lucky Bags. Throw like a champion. Throw lucky. <laughs> we got NOLA bags. Of course, can't come down to Louisiana without having NOLA bags. Sure shot cornhole and girls throw too. And, of course, the directors over there hard at work. Just hanging out, <laughs> relaxing, enjoying the content. Michael, Athena, Kynan, and Ashley. All right, the ladies have made their way to court number one. They finished up. They are ready to rock and roll, starting things off on the left-hand side. Mama V on the back of the jersey there. Sarah Cassidy always with the long hair. There is the spin. And there is a ceremonial knuckle tap, and we are ready to roll. Here we go, time to throw. Don't look now, Jeremiah Ellis has entered the building and he's already been swarmed by Jack, the content team, <laughs> hard at work. Jeremiah Ellis walks in, he's ready to roll. Double broadcast for him this weekend, <coughs> Eric Davis as well. I can't remember, was Tony Smith is on too also, so. Looks like we got Wizard L's for Vanessa. Sarah Cassidy puts everything down the middle and in, so we can't really see what she's throwing, but she is throwing. <laughs> Doing a good job right there, start. sneaking past Vanessa's bags. Throwing fire.
everything up and running. TikTok back in action. What's up, TikTok? Welcome back in. ESPN Plus, TikTok, YouTube, Facebook. I mean, come on. There's so many different ways to watch Cornhole. ACL TV as well. If this isn't up on your 60-inch right now, if you're not sneaking in the back room while you're supposed to be working, I don't know what's <laughs> going on. I love Fridays when I can just sit there and watch the, the lives while I'm working. Yeah, yeah. My boss is usually either there or watching also, so it's okay. <laughs> Pretending not to enjoy it, but deep down enjoying it right there with you. Yeah, Love she. It. Yeah, we both we both play. Her son plays, so it's nice too that that someone that work gets it. You know what I mean? They're not like you're doing what this weekend. Winner of this match again will take on either Elizabeth or Katie. Elizabeth now takes the lead, 13-12. Trying to figure out the score here. Yep. Making sure it was 12 on eight. Looks like they got it agreed. Six to four now on the scoreboard. Vanessa picking up some points there on that last round. Who's Sarah's pro partner this year? Elizabeth Tennyson. Yes. So they could have partner on partner crime after this. They should make a really good team. I want to see them make some good runs. Yeah, we kind of talk a little bit about, you know, the uh, women in the off season always looking for a partner. Usually ends up teaming up women on women. The four, unfortunately, the sport's still kind of developing the women's division. But there are some capable females out there. But when you get two of them that team up, like Elizabeth and Sarah Cassidy, they end up making broadcasts, and that's what we'll see later on. They will take on Deb Odom and Isabella Soprenit. So I talked to Deb last night. And I talked when we were in Florida about how Deb's our oldest pro woman mm -hmm. that we have, mm -hmm. and Bella is our youngest. And they're 50 years apart. What <laughs> other sport do you know where you can have a 50-year age gap and they're dominating? I think they tried it in football once. did not work out very well. <laughs> so Cornhole is the only one left alive as far as that goes. <laughs> they almost exactly... 50 years apart. Both of their birthdays Crazy. are in October. They're 50 years and three days apart or something like that. Yeah, I'm going to be torn in that one. I got to Elizabeth on one side and Deb on the other, so hopefully they don't line up against each other. I just have to watch with my eyes closed. I'm cheering for everybody. Yeah, I just want to see great matches, and so exactly. far that's what we've been getting. Vanessa's going to have to step out to get this collect, but Sarah is just absolutely lights out right now. Going to take a second to switch up the beats. When in doubt, change it out. Look at that water jug. She's staying hydrated today. You got to stay hydrated. And Vanessa's been on a little bit of a physical journey as well. Looking pretty good, losing some weight, feeling good about life. Feeling good about that bag in front of the board too. Whoopsie. <laughs> Opportunity here for Vanessa to capitalize. Vanessa able to finish off that one there does get a point looks like she's asking for some aim and juice of her own she's not staying hydrated like Vanessa is that's that's the difference <laughs> that round right there hydration is key heading into that round we're looking at about 9.67 against the 833 only four bags on the board two on the ground for Cassidy one of them there I'm surprised that Cheyenne isn't here this weekend. Yeah, we're, we're not very far from home yeah, for her. Pro, pro women's action today, no coverage for that. We 
got to make sure we hit broadcast times, of course, and we don't want to hold any of these ladies up and then rush them to the biggest possible matches of their lifetime, although I believe all of them have been on TV already. So. Bella, a world champion. Deb, a world champion. I believe Sarah is as well. Yeah, she's a women's doubles world champion. I think Elizabeth is a shootout champion. That's about it. Actually, I don't know. She lost. Never <laughs> mind. She's 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 just a great person. She's winning at life right now, though. You know, she's she's got one of the best logos on her. I was getting ready to say she's got K9 behind her, so she's she's killing it. Killing it this season. Let's see if Vanessa can get that back to fall. It does not move. Sarah avoided it, so it is going to wash out the round. 13 to 5. The score is going to stay the same. You know what? Let me, let me do something I haven't done in a long time. Let me catch up with Facebook and YouTube chat. Welcome in, everybody. Lindy Brand, how are you doing? Welcome in, Elijah Rolstein. Give me an update a little bit with Cannon Hatcher. I got you, man. Update on Cannon Hatcher right now in the juniors division. He was over on the right side of the bracket. He has advanced over Jacob Gore. Cannon Hatcher, 24 to 16, sending Jacob Gore to the loser's bracket. His next opponent will be Zach Aiken. He's having a rough weekend, Jacob Gore. He is. Well, he's got an even rougher weekend now as he's got to take on Jackson Gore on Kurt 32. So Sarah goes up and off the back. That's unusual for her. We were wanting some twin on twin crime. We got it. Jackson Gore and Jacob Gore. Ryan Trader stays on the winning side. Sammy I love, Soto. I love watching Mason. those two play each other. There's like, there's no brotherly love <laughs> at all. <laughs> They're there to take the other one down. I was kind of talking a little bit of trash last night. Jacob Gore was on the broadcast, and they were winning two to nothing. He's like, Wally, I can't hear you. So I started a chant. I said, Jackson's better. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I said, what do you think, Jackson? You think he heard me? He said, oh, he definitely heard you. But now I, lo I love watching the kids play. It's funny, too. Like, you know, Jack had a really, really good year, and then Jake had a really good mm -hmm. year. So this year, who's it going to be? Who's going to have a better year? I think they're both having a great year. I love seeing it. But right now, Jackson is the hot hand. It all depends on who finishes, though. But that's a great job coming across getting that one. Uh, I was worried for a second it wasn't going to go. Everything down the middle, though, that is a Seagram 7 social. Ooh. Bringing everything full like circle it. here. If you guys don't like Seagram's, you're missing out. It's the number one American blended whiskey. I did have some Seagram's at the apple last night. It's very good. The apple is really good. Very I, I, good. I'm enjoying the apple. And I don't really like to drink. I'm not, a, not big on that. But uh, very good. Do you like to eat? If I you like to eat, you can eat, drink, and stay a while at Miller's Ale House. Hey. They have a phenomenal environment to go hang out at. That went off to the side a little bit from Vanessa. So Elizabeth Tennyson does take down Katie Bartell, 25 to 18. So Tennyson waiting for the winner of this one. On the right-hand side of the bracket, Riley Schaff advances over Ashley Bannister. So Riley Schaff will take on Peyton Haynes. Yes, we are in West Wego, Louisiana this weekend. We're just going to continue to go west. Colorado on deck in a couple weeks for us. <laughs> so someone's asking how the tournaments work. Uh, if you go online to iplaycornhole.com, you can sign up before you get here. Yeah, go to iplaycornhole.com or iplayacl.com. Or you can download the app. Yeah. The Fan Zone app is definitely a place to... Stay in tune and get started. Nice airmail on top of the pile. Gets the bag to redirect left to right, and that's the one she wanted. 
leaving the bag on the right-hand side in Vanessa's lane. Vanessa, though, did a great job almost coming across for that collect. But, yeah, you can go there and sign up before you get here. Pick all your tournaments out that you want to play in, sign up, and come on, come on out and play. D-Boy in the chat and in the building, I assume, or at least in the area. <laughs> so you feel me. I feel you, my man. Good to see you again yesterday. I like this little bit of drama we got going here in round 13, right around oh. the edge. She's stepping out. Sarah's collect. And Vanessa unable to get that one to go. So that's going to be 18 to 6 now. Mama V in a little bit of trouble here. Back against the wall. So what do you do to slow Sarah Cassidy down here, Wally? I think you got to try and get her start shooting some airmails at some point. Instead of thinking 12 on 10, you, you might have to start thinking 8 on 5 or 10 on 8 or something like that. Mm, that's that blocker be does trouble. not work. Sarah again just on fire right now. This bag has got to be in, and it is. Stays alive, but you can see the frustration starting to kick in a little bit. Sarah going to pick up two points there, making it 20 to 6. One point away from moving on. off to the side this could be it see if Sarah can drive through it she does oh. not she stays on the board though Vanessa still got the clean up and she does not everything's starting to fall apart here the game could be over one bag left Sarah Cassidy is in Vanessa has got to save the game three feet out pinky toe left on the mat sticky oh. side down does not get the airmail to go Sarah Cassidy is going to take this one down she will advance to take on her pro partner next, Elizabeth Tennyson. Winner of that one gets to the queen seat. On the other side of the bracket, Riley Schaff will take on Peyton Haynes on deck. But first, we got some seniors action. Harold Norris and Andy Phillips when we come back here in West Week, Louisiana. Life's most memorable moments, they can happen anywhere. On sports' biggest stage, or even in your own backyard. For those moments, seek a world beyond home. Find furniture, decor, grills, play sets, yard games, and yep, even cornhole. Backyard.com has everything you need to make your backyard summer ready all year long. Backyard.com. Let's have fun. Roll that beautiful bean footage. Bush's baked beans have always been the official bean of making burgers taste better. And now, they're the official beans of the SEC. And the official bean of whatever that is. Hey, it's tailgate fashion. Now this guy gets it. Oh, nuts. No, no. With planters nuts, it's not, ah, nuts. It's, ah, uh, nuts. Because planters nuts are good. Planters nuts. Ah, nuts. You can dash, zest, mist, and infuse. But may we recommend the just make the damn drink method. Behold, the 7 and 7. If this is your cocktail, Seagram 7 is your whiskey. Roll that beautiful bean footage. You've got the force field, the moat, the saucy sheriff. No matter your cookout plate strategy, Bush's baked beans make burgers taste better. I love me a saucy sheriff. Goes way up top and hits it! What? He knows. 
throws it, goes to the top, and hits it! What a shot! Ticket to the championship, and Graham hits it! What a shot! Welcome back, Cornhole fans. West Wego, Louisiana, open number 13, back underway. Switching things up and heading over to the seniors division. But if you're in the area, make sure you head over to the ACL merch booth. You can pick up your jerseys and your cornhole apparel and stuff right over there. Chris will be glad to help you guys out. Tell her I sent you. Tell her I said hello. Right next to that, we have the all cornhole tent. You can stop over there and see Tristan. Tristan and Kristen hard at work over there. All Cornhole from the backyard to your pro journey. Allcornhole.com has you covered. We have you guys covered right now. Going back to the main court for the seniors division as we're going to bring on two gentlemen that you guys might not be familiar with. I am definitely familiar with Andy Phillips. He has been on a tear. We're going to bring in Harold Norris, though. Harold Norris, a new one for me. He is rocking the central Mississippi Cornhole jersey. And, of course, on the far side there, Andy Phillips, one of the new strong seniors. Welcome to the division this year. He is throwing like a champion because he is throwing lucky. Lucky Bex Corn will check them out as well, sponsoring the live feeds this weekend. I'm Wally K9 Castler. Allison Baldwin in the booth here with me. Allison, looks like we got some uh, lucky on lucky crime getting ready to happen here. I see that. I am not familiar with either one of these guys. So Andy Phillips has made his way to some of the championship matches before. I can't remember if he actually has any titles or not in the seniors division, but I've seen him in a few finals at least. Chat, chat would definitely uh, take care of me and uh, let me know if I'm right as my fellow canine brethren shows up over there on the <laughs> right side of our screen by that beautiful bush bean banner. Coming to check out some cornhole action while he's working. Roger that. It's a 10-4, good buddy. All right, I'll give you guys an update right now. On the seniors division, all these players are left live. Frank Modlin underway on court 19 against Walter Ferris. Winner of that one goes to the king seat match to take on either Damon Dennis or one of these two gentlemen. On the loser side of the bracket, Gary Long, Ralph Swan, Stacy Campbell, Tony Cologne, John Henry, Kevin Fields, David Roberts on the right-hand side, Donald Cup and Steve Schrader doing battle on court number 17, and James Barkowitz taking on Brent Dysherry. And that is it. Those are all the seniors that are left alive. We're underway here. Score is going to stay at zero. Appreciate you guys tuning in no matter where you're watching. Facebook, YouTube, ACL TV. TikTok, or, of course, ESPN+. Plus. If you guys are going to be messaging me tonight, which I know about 47 of you in the chat are, download ESPN+. Plus. Sign up today. That's where you're going to want to see all your live feed action. Looks like Ryan Trader has punched his ticket into the King Seat game, waiting for either Zach Aiken or Cannon Hatcher. How about that? Cannon Hatcher playing pretty close to home as well. He should have a pretty good home crowd. How about Ian Cripps playing on his home turf today? It doesn't get any better than that. Love it. Is that six points right there, Wally? That is. That is spicy start. That is a big spot. Cajun, if you will. <laughs> hey, it's 11-11. Allison, make a wish. What'd you wish for? Nothing. That never works. <laughs> I've been doing that for a long time. I never got anything that I wished for. Yeah, all in due time, my dear. All in <laughs> due time. <laughs> I wish for a good cornhole. There you go. Well, we got that here. Everything down the middle and in. Harold down the middle and in there with his yellow bag. Andy on the far side with his brown bag in. 
That's a colorblind joke for the truck. Six nothing start. The security guy, he's, he's taking a seat now. He's right. He's, he's interested. He's fully invested. <laughs> Hopefully nothing happens where we need a police officer because he's into this game. Nah, we're cornhole people. We're all fun. Exactly. That's the backyard.com motto. Let's have fun. It's not let's cause drama and use police officers. <laughs> I don't know that I've ever seen someone need a police officer at a cornhole event that I've been to, so that's good news. Yeah, I think that would just be weird. Yeah. It'd just be weird. It looks like these are Celtics that uh, Andy Phillips is throwing. I'm still trying to get a look. I can't tell if these are some type of surefires. These might be Celtics as well. Celtics, those are slick, slick on slick, right? Super slick. Pro snipers. Pro snipers and Celtics. There we go. It looks like that bag on the edge is going to fall, so Andy's going to have to drive through this. Does not drive through it. Gets the point. I believe there's one on the ground. Let's see if we can use one of our 27 cameras that we have here on <laughs> the live feed court. Nothing but the best for you guys. I think we actually have 30, not 30, 27. Yeah. <laughs> I think we had to eliminate a few to get you those uh, board mics now. We want to hear what the players are talking about this weekend. There's going to be some chatter. I think I got Logan Chamberlain and Jacob Gore all riled up, ready to get vocal this weekend. You're not going to hear too much trash talk in the seniors division. No, definitely not. <laughs> A lot of handshaking and awkward knuckles from the seniors division. That's why I love it so much. I know. The, the, the game earlier, I was, they're giving knuckles after every <laughs> round. This is a big opportunity here for Harold. Oh, oh he got a piece Almost. of it, but it does not fall the rest of the way in. Going to be four? That uh, will be four. Ten to one. Damon Dennis back there. Yeah, Damon keeping a close eye on it to see who he might have to end up playing. Keeping an eye on his opponents. <laughs> like... We got some TVs set up out here today so everyone can see when they're on the broadcast. So they're saying hi to everybody. eye on that again the pro never mind he doesn't even want to risk it falling in on its own he's going to shoot it with an airmail could be looking at our first senior social never mind how about new no. off to the side misses that one but he did not miss this airmail let's take a look at this again the bag right there on the rim Harold up top hits it nice shot gets the drag Harold Norris, Andy Phillips trying to get to that man right there. He's just lounging, relaxing. He's on TV. He knows it. He's trying not to act like he knows he's on TV. There he is. Now we got him. 10 to 3 start here for Harold Norris. First back down the middle and in. Harold with another one off to the side. Opportunity here for Andy. Oh, my goodness, things falling apart here. Meanwhile, Andy Phillips in rhythm finds it. Bag number four is in just to limit that to six. That is going to be a six-point round for Andy Phillips, and he's right back into it now, 10 to nine. I had a 10-4 good buddy joke lined up. The police officer's gone. Andy skips right over four. We're just going to move on. I'll talk to you, chat. How you guys doing? Kiefer, what up? Welcome in. Trey Hunt in the chat now. Trey, what's going on, brother? Looking forward to seeing you this weekend. Trey Hunt actually in the chat reminds me I forgot to post my players to watch because uh, he's he's actually on it. I'll pick that post in a little bit. Got to give recognition to the great players in the area and state of Louisiana. Harold, wheels have started to fall off. He is in trouble. 
One off to the side, one off the back of the board. He's stepping in. He might be going airmail again. Looks like he is going up top. He's going to land short. That stays on the board at least, though. I believe that's a 10 on five. So two huge swings here from Andy Phillips connect, and he now has the lead. They're taking it over 14 to 10. Andy going to try and clip this just enough to collect it. Back number four, too far to the side. Got too much of it. And Harold able to capitalize on bag number four. Again, next up here on the live feeds will be Riley Schaff and Peyton Haynes as we switch over to the women's division to try and figure out who's going to get to the queen seat there. Fourteen to twelve. Uh-oh. Down the middle so far here for Harold. He's controlling the lane. Just tapping the pile now. Perfect placement there on bag number three. Just tap. He kind of looks like Bob Barker now. He's tapping it in. Tapping it in. Big shot right there. Price is right for Andy Phillips. He's able to push that one in and see if he can go up top and collect this one. When you say, when you said that, all I wanted to say is the price is wrong. Bob. Bob. That's not what he says, uh, but we'll just say Bob. It looks not to go with an airmail. Goes board. Let's take a look at this shot again. Andy Phillips up top hits the airmail perfectly. It spins off to the side for a second. We thought that bag was out of play, but it was in. And I believe that round washes out. Make sure they type in the scoreboard. It is 14 to 14. Did he have two on that? I don't know. He's, he's going to he's, he's gonna take two. We're going to let them put in the score. I don't know. Get the TikTok camera switched here in just a little bit for you guys. There we go. Interesting decision here. He's stepping out. I do not like this lane at all. If anything, maybe go high airmail and try and use Harold's bag to redirect you in. He side rails it. There wasn't much room to begin with. Maybe he was feeling lucky. Harold stepping all the way out. He's like, all right, you like something you saw over there? I'll let you, I'll let you look at it again. And he turns around to check the scoreboard. And that one is off the back. 16-14. We'll do a Mike's Hard Lemonade PPR check in a little bit. Mike's Hard Lemonade. Nobody makes lemonade like Mike's. Drink responsibly. So we're getting ready to throw their bags here in round number 12. Andy Phillips throwing an 8.73 with three total four backers. 27% of them go in the hole. Taking a look at Harold here with an 8.91. Same, 27%. That one's off to the side. Andy does not like where it's at. Harold bullies it just for good measure. Harold's shown exactly why he's in the position he is in this bracket so far. Trying to get to Damon Dennis. Picks up a couple more points there.
one thing I love about the seniors division too. It seems like there's always a new senior waiting to break onto the scene. I assume with him rocking that Mississippi jersey, he doesn't get to travel too much to these opens. But I will put his name on the radar along with Andy Phillips of players to watch. Another gentleman that I'm not familiar with on the other side of the bracket, Walter Ferris, great name, taking on Frank Modlin. Frank Modlin in the lead there, 3-0. I will stick with my fellow Walter and, and root for Walter. Not too many of us out there. The name's dying. Another opportunity here for Andy. Harold still stepping out on the mat. He thinks he can collect this bag. Tilt is going in the wrong direction, though. I recognize that tilt. Left to right movement only, no collect. Looking at four points, might have a tight game. He went for the airmail. I don't like that call. Looks like six points if Andy can go in. He is. We got us a game now, Wally. Absolutely. 20 to 18, 14 rounds in. Andy trying to finish it off. It looks like we have ourselves a junior Prince seat match set. Ryan Trader to take on Cannon Hatcher. But first, we're going to go to the women's division for Riley Schaff and Peyton Haynes. But that's going to be pretty exciting. A couple matches down the road. You guys do not want to miss out on this action. Especially if you're on TikTok watching the wrong camera, the truck will get that taken care of in just a second. <laughs> Whoopsie for the truck. One tire's gone. We got <laughs> we got three left plus the tow truck. We're still rolling. Hey, that's that's a ten time better feed than they got last uh, tournament at TikTok. We had. Had some issues getting you guys TikTok coverage, so if you guys are enjoying the TikTok coverage, appreciate you guys all tuning in. I love TikTok coverage. Make sure you hit the follow. I'm the type of guy that if I were at home watching this right now, I would have a TikTok TV up. I would have a ESPN Plus TV going. And I don't know, I'm sure, I'm sure the truck has some type of coverage going of what they're doing back there behind the scenes. It's got to be a camera backstage somewhere. 20 to 18, though. Who is going to blink first? That is going to be a hard collect for Harold. Unless Andy knocks it in on the next shot. And now Andy down to his final mistake. He's stepping out. He might go for this collect. He is able to get the corner. Nice job by Andy Phillips bringing it closer. Misses it, and that's going to do it. Andy Phillips, two points, takes that one down. How about that? So, hey, I'll tell you what, had no idea who Harold Norris was going into that one. But Andy Phillips takes this one down. So Damon Dennis on next. But first, Peyton Haynes and Riley Schaff as we switch over to women's division. After that, juniors print seat between Trader and Hatcher. We'll be back right after this. Life's most memorable moments, they can happen anywhere. On sports' biggest stage, or even in your own backyard. For those moments, seek a world beyond home. Find furniture, decor, grills, play sets, yard games, and yep, even cornhole. Backyard.com has everything you need to make your backyard summer ready all year long. Backyard.com. Let's have fun. Roll that beautiful bean footage. Bush's baked beans have always been the official bean of making burgers taste better. And now they're the official beans of the SEC. And the official bean of whatever that is. Hey, it's tailgate fashion. Now this guy gets it. Ah, nuts. No, no. What's Planet's Nuts? It's not ah, uh, nuts. It's ah, uh, nuts. Because Planet's Nuts are good. Planter's Nuts. Ah, nuts. Cornhole is more than a game. It is a battle of skill and precision. And when the game is on the line, you need a bag you can trust. With Lucky Bags, our Surefire and Pro Sniper bags are designed for all players and those who demand the best. 
Our lineup of Lucky Bags are made of the finest materials and built to perform with precision and accuracy. Get your Lucky Bags today and experience the bags that champions use. Visit LuckyCornhole.com to order now. Throw like a champion, throw lucky. Roll that beautiful bean footage. You've got the force field, the moat, the saucy sheriff. No matter your cookout plate strategy, Bush's baked beans make burgers taste better. I love me a saucy sheriff. Oh, nuts. No, no. But planners nuts is not, ah, nuts. It's, ah, nuts. Because planners nuts are good. Planters nuts, ah, nuts. All right, Cornhole fans, welcome back to the Ilario Center in West Wego, Louisiana. Open number 13 action continues. Bringing on Riley Schaff, another Lucky Bag sponsored player. She's going to take on Peyton Haynes. There's a good look at Corey and Chase working hard in the truck. They act like they don't do anything, but these gentlemen are putting in hours and hours of work. It's ironic that they put themselves on camera to get a little bit of TV time. As the women finish their down and back, there's Allison. Cat Halbert in the background watching, working. I'm Wally K9 Caster. We head down to the court. Court number one. Lucky Bag sponsor player getting ready to do some action. Throw like a champion. Throw Lucky. Riley Schaff is on her way. As she can uh, take down Peyton Haynes here. She'll be in the queen seat match to take on either Sarah Cassidy or Elizabeth Tennyson. But first, Peyton Haynes, a very, very tough task. Sitting right here, Peyton comes in as the sixth seed, defeated Diane Fox 25 to seven, and then Paul Avila, Paula Avila, sorry, 24 to seven, and then and Sam Finley after that one, sorry, and then Riley Schaff up top comes in as your where she be, there she is, 18 seed, Stacy Van Glider falls to her 22 to two, then 24 to 10 over Connie Altice, 21 16 over Ashley Bannister, so. Strong competition to get to this point. Riley Schaff has been on the up-and-coming list for a long time. I remember watching her play when we were in Memphis, Tennessee, and she did really, really well. She took down some big names that tournament. Yeah, it's only a matter of time before we see her in the pro women's circuit. I think she's just got to get the traveling down more. It's kind of hard with the junior players and the younger players to do that. And like you said, Peyton, she's a beast. Yeah. Good to see Peyton on the broadcast yesterday. You're talking to yourself, Walter? <laughs> I guess I was. <laughs> <laughs> the truck too worried about getting themselves on camera instead of turning all the mics back on. <laughs> Is that not, I think we ran over the nail. It's not a full flat tire yet. <laughs> so we... we Three, three and a half tires is what we're going to call it. But two points right there for Peyton. We're underway. Looks like Peyton's throwing sure fires. Some type of a cornhole scenario bag in the hands for Peyton. Did I say that right? Rally throwing sure fires? Either way. I hear, believe hear what so. you will, chat. I said it correctly. You just misheard it if I... <laughs> Jeremy wants to know why do I think the women's side of the game hasn't embraced the roll bag as much as the junior side or the men's side I actually think it's the step before that in order to roll a bag you need something to roll over and in the women's division you're trying to get your PPR up a little bit higher so you're running bags you're really not throwing too many blockers or trying to manufacture points yet I think once that blocker makes its way to the women's division we will see players like Peyton Riley and Isabella Soprano start to roll a little bit more. I mean, Miranda Coy, she was the roll queen. She switched over to Lucky Bags, and now she's throwing faster bags too. So Yeah, she doesn't really utilize that bag a whole lot anymore. But yeah, I, th I think we're close. I think the women's division is implementing a little bit more strategy, and it kind of puts a lot of pressure on Peyton Haynes as we talk about stuff like that. Yep. Nice little cut there from Riley, able to get right to left movement out of that surefire. Let's keep an eye on that. Whoopsie! Front of the board, big opportunity here for Riley. Bag number four for big points. Does not get the cut to go. That's going to be three. And she is on the board and underway.
Peyton's got one hanging on the back. Let's see if it'll drip back on its own or go. I think they're all going to go. Ooh. None of it goes. How about that? Wow. It's a wash either way. It's either 12 on 12 or 10 on 10. Riley has first shot now, four to three. Jeff wants to know, does the does the camera change for TikTok? Yeah, camera changes for TikTok. Got a couple different views we can look at it there. Always want to see that bag flight. We got a lot of different cameras in action, so you can see more bag flight here. We'll Peyton upset about that bag. She was looking to pick up some points for sure. Now she's looking at a wash. Yeah, able to go in there. Peyton Haynes has one of the best awkward knuckles with uh, <laughs> Allison Peters, pre-Allison Springer. Just decided to walk clear across the board to chase her back to the scoreboard. I love that. <laughs> but yeah, plenty of uh, plenty of different cameras in action. We'll show you guys the camera back flight path here as these ladies are throwing left to right. Down towards the backyard.com banner. There's no un, no, no uh, angle that we don't want to show you. Nothing unturned is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, we got them all. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Chat, Chat just absolutely hates that Peyton likes the wired headphones. I, I don't know why. You know, when you yeah. get wireless, you got to charge you, them. What you, and what you like, you like, you know? Yeah, I mean, I always lose on. one, and I only have one. Then I go buy more, and then I find the old one. It's, it's like me with my watch. I just wore <laughs> my watch today with 0% charge on it. Well, at least you took it off now. <laughs> it was, Instead it was of just coming. using it as decoration. I, I kept looking at it, and I kept having phantom rings. <laughs> you know, like I felt like my <laughs> arm was vibrating. I looked down, there's nothing there. <laughs> Tubby Cobb in the chat. What up, man? What up? Welcome in. Does Riley go after that bag? Here's the bag flight camp. Check that out. Coming right at you. She you can see all the rotation and spin on it. She set her right up, back up again to go after that bag with a bumper. Yep. A lot of you players that are just getting into the game, if you got your cell phone and a tripod, set it up just like this angle. Take a look at yourself. You'll see if you're finishing and coming across your body, where your follow-through ends, a lot of different things. Your finger placement. Notice oh. a lot of the pros when they throw, they keep that uh, pointer finger down below their middle finger when they release. So a lot of things you can look at from that angle. Great job. Shout out to the truck again. Peyton throwing copycats? I think so. Not 100% sure. Again, always hard to kind of tell these Cornell scenario bags for me. I know she was throwing the copycats last night. These girls both kind of have a similar pace to their wind-up and their release. You can count it right there in the, as it's rotating. You can see it's nine revolutions. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine. See it? One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine. See that there, Allison? You counting them? I can't keep up. I can't count that fast, Wally. I'm pretty smart. You're the counter. <laughs> I'm pretty smart. <laughs> Mine, works. Mine works in mysterious ways. You just ask Jake Brandon his math skills. <laughs> his are more better. These ladies are putting me to sleep with the rhythm right now. They're just hitting the board and throwing with no hesitation. Ooh, there we go. There's a little bit of action yep. right there. That's what I was talking about. See, the, the roll doesn't really come into play until there's a blocker in place. See if we can get a back block here. She wants to drive through Ooh. or sneak around. How about that? Even better. Gonna I think be she was sore. trying to sneak around, and she was happy it went around it because it gets two more points. Let's take a look at this again. I thought she was trying to drive through. Lands right on the red of the red zone. Gets it to drip. Falls in 12-5 to five now. Four-point round for Peyton Haynes.
feel like I hear Chucky Love in the building. Twelve to seven. Riley's first bag is off to the side. I think the directors Eight. are over there jamming out. No, I think it's coming from the hallway. Either way, fun times. Someone's having a party. Didn't invite us. Yep, there is a Maddie McBride sitting next to Lexi in the background, spotting over here on the left-hand side, the Corn Nuts banner side. Get a look at Maddie and Lexi here in the background. Like I said, down by the corn nuts side, the crunchy corn nuts. Crunchy corn kernels. Corn nuts. <laughs> Had it backwards. I'll work on it. Sorry, corn nuts. <laughs> we'll do better next time. It's been a while since I've had corn nuts. Peyton's struggling with her first bag. Keep an eye on that bag. Let's see if we'll oh, go no. back in. Not with that. Backboards now for Riley. Let's talk about Riley's shoe game real quick. That's pretty on point. Oh, with the wow. Outfit, matching the hair from head to toe. Those are very pretty. If only we had nice. a camera that can get shoes. If only we had a camera that gets shoes. Walter, we're going to get more cameras now. I don't know. Let's see, let's see what happens. Oh, my goodness. Look at that truck. How about that? We, <laughs> there we, we go. We put air back in the tire. We are ready to roll. <laughs> Look at those shoes from Riley. Good opportunity if you work for Nike to reach out. Give us some free shoes and sponsor a segment. Could be your shoe cam. I know I know. Sean Latham would be thrilled. He's a big, big shoeologist. Oh, there's the, there's the roll. Doesn't go. The right thigh is going to pay for it. She's like me. When you miss a shot, boom, instantly. Taking it on yourself. Does she go up here? Nope, she's going to. No need to as Riley's off to the side. She'll take a couple points. She had one hanging, though. She could have picked up two more points if she got the airmail drag. Six to 11. Peyton, round 15. First bag down the middle and in. Neither layer, lady going to lay a block here. They're just going in. Whew, that was low out of her hand. She knew the release point was off. Riley does not capitalize, though. Gave it right back. Yep, bag number four off to the side. Brian Nicholson in the chat. What's up, Bubba? How you doing, man? Thank you for holding down league for me yesterday while I was away. You did such a great job. I'll let you do it the next two weeks as well. As I will head to New Hampshire next week for conference finals, the final conference out there, and then uh, Colorado. National and pro event number two, Cornhole Mania. Good block. Let's see if we get that roll here from Peyton. She elects to go airmail instead. I'm shocked. She didn't want to play it safe with the 16 to 11 lead. She's off the board. I'll see if Riley's got a roll. Riley, line drive, knocks in Peyton's bag. Peyton can go slick side down, come across the board, maybe get the collect for the possible win. She is slick side down, hits the pile, misses too far to the right, collects too much of Riley's bag, but we're looking at plus three. Going oh, up. Airmail again, oh, she backside, hits it. boom. That's what she wanted wow. the first time. Unable to get the first one, but that one washes out the round, I believe. Let's take a look at that one more time. Line drive. You guys couldn't really see it from this angle, but 
just right at the screen. Boom, backside, big hit. Washington around, keeping the score 16 to 11. And that was neat. What's up, Jeremy Fraser checking in. We were just talking about you earlier, bud. This is not the championship match. Appreciate you asking. This is a match to go to the queen seat, though. Next match up on the live feeds here will be Ryan Trader against Cannon Hatcher. That will be for the king seat of the juniors division. Over in the seniors division, Frank Modlin on court 19 finds himself down to Walter Ferris. I'm telling you, never count out them Walters. Andy Phillips down 12 to 9 to Damon Dennis. 12 6, rather. So, is that a strategic timeout? No, Going she wants up. to go backside. She wants to see how much was there. And Riley able to collect on bag number four. Kind of put her to the test there. I think she just wanted to see how her push game was, and Riley lives up to the task. Peyton in the background getting some aim and fuel. Monster? T? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if it works. Probably had that imported from Miller's Ale House, you know. She, she ate and drank. She did not stay a while. She had a match to play. Made her way back here to court number one. Oh Riley no. missing her landing spot. She's in trouble. That one looked low on the board. Luckily, it does take away center lane. It's kind of an ugly round so far. Five on three. Each lady with one bag remaining. Off the back, this could be it. In for the win. Five points if she's able to get in. She's able to get the cut around the side. Awkward knuckles to finish it, but that takes care of that one. Riley Schaaf heading over to the loser's bracket. Peyton Haynes able to get that cut to go in. Chat, when we come back, we're switching over to the juniors division. Ryan Trader will take on Cannon Hatcher here in the Backyard.com court. Let's have fun. Life's most memorable moments, they can happen anywhere. On sports biggest stage, or even in your own backyard. For those moments, seek a world beyond home. Find furniture, decor, grills, play sets, yard games, and yep, even cornhole. Backyard.com has everything you need to make your backyard summer ready all year long. Backyard.com, let's have fun. Ah, nuts. No, no. What's Planet's Nuts? It's not ah, uh, nuts. It's ah, uh, nuts. Because Planter's Nuts are good. Planter's Nuts. Ah, nuts. You can dash, zest, mist, and infuse. But may we recommend the just make the damn drink method. Behold, the seven and seven. If this is your cocktail, Seagram Seven is your whiskey. It goes the top and hits it! What a shot! Ticket to the championship and Seagram hits it! What a shot! Oh, nuts. No, no. With Planner's Nuts, it's not, ah, nuts. It's, ah, nuts. Because Planner's Nuts are good. Planter's Nuts. Ah, nuts. You can dash, zest, mist, and infuse. But may we recommend the just make the damn drink method. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back here to court number one. Open number 13, West Wego, Louisiana. Juniors division action is set and ready to go here on court number one. 
Go ahead and bring you guys over to us. Wally K9 Castle here in the booth with Allison Baldwin. We got the first broadcast here on ESPN Plus, Facebook, YouTube, ACL TV, and TikTok underway. The spin has just happened. Ryan Trader, one of the young phenoms of the season, makes his way to the court. Cannon Hatcher, pretty much a local boy, getting uh, ready to toss some bags. Here. He's throwing NOLAs, so if you're interested in the bags, he's throwing the NOLA booth right behind us. Allison, what do you want to see between these youngsters here? Um, I want to see a little bit of a dirty game. We've been seeing a lot of high PPR, bag for bag. I want to see some rolls in fun stuff. Here we go. A little bit of a cut. Yep, good landing spot on that one. Cannon unable to get the bag in hand to fall with it. So Ryan Trader is going to strike first two to nothing. If the shades work for Ryan Trader, he wins wearing the shades. Does he just keep them on now? Absolutely. It's like a good luck thing, right? I don't know. He had a certain jersey he used to wear every uh, single Sunday whenever he was winning his opens. Rocking the new fly jersey now, though. It's not Sunday yet. We it shall see. It's not Sunday. It's not Sunday. Maybe he's got a, Maybe he's gone back on track. Again, I talked about talking to mom and pop during the broadcast yesterday, and they said Ryan Ryan might go to Vegas to win his fourth Open in singles. And I was like, Ah, I see what you're doing there, because he'd have to win this one to get number three. So yeah. They're already counting on the dub. Oh, look at that nice. shot! Lands on top of the pile, gets the domino effect to fall. What an amazing shot there from Cannon Hatcher. Let's take a look at the shot again. Cannon Hatcher able to go up top onto the pile, threw it high enough to get it to fall back in on slick side. Nicely done. Three to nothing. Score stays the same. Bring you guys on the board cam now there so you can see everything falling in the hole. TikTok, you guys will catch up in a little bit. You'll be able to see the angles that you're wanting to see. Hmm. You'll just be able to see all the angles actually tick tock. We're just going to keep going back and forth mid shots for you guys to get nice and confused as to what's going on. But we're having some fun out here. Day number one. Again, Allison, it feels kind of weird. We only have three broadcasts this weekend for us. That there is uh, plenty of broadcast coverage. That is really weird. Yeah, well, a lot of work. Normally we're here like morning to night coverage all day. I'm not complaining, though. I'm excited to go watch the the final of everything that went down in Florida. Yeah, absolutely. See who's going to take it all down. Looks like down here from Trader. Hard in the pile. Nice job. Gets the bully and the collect. That was a nice pulley bush there from Ryan Trader. Sticky side now. Going for the roll. Tried to coin slot it. Gets everything to fall in, though. He's looking at at least two points this round. Hatcher came up a little bit short on his release, and that one's going to be off to the side. So Trader gets four points off of this amazing shot. Nice job pushing into the pile, bullying that Nola bag to the left side and out of play, generating a couple points that round. Seven to nothing start here for Ryan Trader. in here this round. Seems like the boards are slicker today than they were yesterday. Yeah, Damon Dennis came in saying that they were fast whenever he was warming up exactly how he liked them. He was struggling a little bit with his pushes, though. Everything was kind of going off the back for him, but Ryan Trader right there in command of this one, 7 nothing. Boards last night were really fast. I feel like these are at least slow enough, slow enough for them to kind of manufacture rounds and generate. Yeah, last night that was wild. That was. Mm -hmm. I've never seen so many bags off the back. I'm trying to cut 
around. Another email for Hatcher. Nicely done. Gets his backside bag to go. Leaving the front one in place, but Trader does drive through it. Getting the two for one. Good round there for Hatcher. Double fist pump as he is now started and on the board gets first toss. Sit and go number two, guys. I'll be right back. I gotta go play. <laughs> Jake Brandon might show up just to keep his 0-1 streak alive. <laughs> We got uh, Billy Webb over there on the top row of the bleachers, rooting on his NOLA-sponsored player in Cannon. Good to see Billy again. That's one thing I love about traveling across the country is getting to see all the people I haven't seen in a while. That looked like a weird oh. release point. I don't know if he was trying to force a block there or what. That one. I don't know. A fourth bag block? That doesn't sound like a good plan. Oh, it came out weird. Either way, it's going to generate two more points for Ryan Trader. There's a look at Billy. <laughs> of Nola bags are all talking over there like, what was he trying to do there? Like, I don't know. That was a weird shot. <laughs> Back to the courts, though. Good side-by-side -side here from Cannon. Oh, it's moving. There it goes. That roll attempt too far. He just makes all of these shots look so easy. Yeah, it's a lot easier when he has all four bags. You know, fun <laughs> fact, I don't know if I told you guys this story yet. <laughs> now Ryan Trader, he's Go been on. putting in the work. Oh, we no. Misses that one. Trader says that's unfortunate. Gives him the knuckles and consolidation. He wants the points, though. Consolation, rather. Consolidation, too, whatever. 13-2. Uh, we talk about it quite a bit with the foot foul rules and stuff like that. Ryan Trader last year was notorious for foot fouling, according to the new rules. So he spent a lot of time in the offseason changing his throw to come to this throw right here and you know trying to fix the problem ended up making him a better player with all the practicing that yeah. he was doing. So. It has paid off. A lot of movement in his throw. Yeah, different styles for sure. Ryan Trader moving pretty much every single body part two or three <laughs> times. <laughs> right. Cannon Hatcher barely moving anything on the opposite side. Taking three steps, didn't then throw in the bag. I have tried to throw like Ryan Trader. It has not gone well. Not a tech. If you're watching at home, not a technique I recommend unless you uh, plan on practicing quite a bit. Something else I don't recommend: taking on your pro partner in an important match. That's exactly what we're going to get next. Wow, is Sarah Cassie's going to take on Elizabeth Tennyson? Big shot there from Trader. Hatcher up top of the airmail. See if he wants to get aggressive and go again. He does not. Slick side down off the oh, back of the board. That's no. five. Let's take a look at this again. Ryan Trader misses. <laughs> nice, nice miss there from Ryan Trader. Official flat tire. <laughs> and good collect though by Ryan Trader. Shot before that going slick side down, going left to right on the board. 20 to 2. Now that we got the TVs and monitors up, it's pretty cool that we put those you know, fake replays up, if you will, on purpose to trick the crowd to see the reactions. <laughs> Got to keep ourselves entertained, you know. 10 on 10 watch there, so Cannon Hatcher lose to fight another day. We'll do a quick PPR check now that we've passed 10 rounds. This one brought to you by All Cornhole from the backyard of your pro journey. Allcornhole.com has you covered. Cannon Hatcher with a 9.64, three four baggers. Ryan Trader on the other side with an 18-point lead, doing okay with an 11.27. Seven four-baggers, that's a 63% four-bagger percentage. If you guys are new to the game, that is very good, just like that collapse. That's Huge crazy. shot there from Ryan Trader. 
to throw that bag that low, that hard, and have that sort of precision is hard to do. Hard tilt. My man is throwing right now, getting great right to left movement on the board. Cannon Hatcher in front. This pretty much seals the deal on the board for the win. Ryan wants to go up top. <laughs> he, he wants to end in some flares. Parents looking on like, what are you doing? The game is continuing. 10 to 10 <laughs> wash right there. Mom and pop across the way just shaking their head like, what is he doing? He's not ready to leave the hey, live court He's yet. having fun. You don't want to get him bored. Blocker there on the edge of the red zone to start round number 13. It might have worked. Cannon's first bag looks like it kicked off to the left. Ryan's happy. Collects right away. Again, this is for the king seat. Cannon bring it closer. That's the one thing right there. That block about Ryan Trader's game, he oh. will see things go in a different direction, and he will change it up. Instead of going in, he wants the block. There's the push. Seals the deal. <laughs> Cannon says, come on, man. He should have went between the legs like this. Oh, air mail between the, the legs. Mail. It's that simple. Love that. Big shot there from Cannon Hatcher. A little bit too late, though. It ends with some flair. Ryan Trader takes that one down. So Cannon Hatcher getting ahead to the loser's bracket. Ryan Trader has to be double dipped. Over there, Mason Trader doing battle with Jacob Gore. Jacob Gore in the lead there, four to nothing. Let's take a look at these replays. Great shots here for these boys. Ryan Trader in command of this entire game. Cannon Hatcher had some moments, but Ryan Trader, they're just bullying everything away. Slick side down, coming across to get that collect. And here's the last one, hard, slick side down, catches just enough of the red zone, gets the drip. Cannon Hatcher, though, between the legs, boom, putting himself on the highlight reel for next week's show. When we come back, we're going to switch over to the women's division. Elizabeth Tennyson will take on her pro partner, Sarah Cassidy. Life's most memorable moments, they can happen anywhere. On sports' biggest stage, or even in your own backyard. For those moments, seek a world beyond home. Find furniture, decor, grills, play sets, yard games, and yep, even cornhole. Backyard.com has everything you need to make your backyard summer ready all year long. Backyard.com, let's have fun. Ah, nuts. No, no. What's Planet's Nuts? It's not ah, uh, nuts. It's ah, uh, nuts. Because Planter's Nuts are good. Planter's Nuts. Ah, nuts. You can dash, zest, mist, and infuse. But may we recommend the just make the damn drink method. Behold, the 7 and 7. If this is your cocktail, Seagram 7 is your whiskey. It goes the top and hits it! What a shot! A ticket to the championship and grabs hits it! What a shot! Oh, nuts. No, no. Welcome back, Cornhole fans. Open number 13 continues with some women's action here on court number one. Brought to you by Corn Nuts. Corn Nuts, Crunchy Corn Kernels. Sarah Cassidy will take on her pro partner now, Elizabeth Tennyson. Both ladies throwing BG bags. Beautiful looks around the West Wego, Louisiana. Speaking of beautiful looks, there is Michael Gonzalez, Athena Delgado, Kynan White, and Ashley Scola holding it down for us in the director's table. Look at the top of Allison's head <laughs> and mine right there. Nicely, nicely done by the truck, getting all this beautiful footage there. And then it's going south real quick as we get to the actual truck. As there's Corey <laughs> and Chase, they're holding it down for us. Look at all these buttons and wires they're pushing. If you guys are enjoying the content, make sure you let them know in the chat. Say thank you. 
We're going to head down to the court here where Sarah and Elizabeth are finishing up. Or actually, we've got zeros on the scoreboard. They might be ready. We got one sitting on the back here from Sarah. Let's see if that one's going to hang on or if it's going to fall. Like, uh, is, is Sarah throwing her team's bags? I think she is. It does hang on for dear life, though, and somehow Sarah gets some points this round. Two of them, to be precise. <laughs> Elizabeth going slick side down. She's going after this bag now. Bag in the board goes. Bag in the hand off to the right. Oh, no. And another Hands fourth up. bag off to the side from Elizabeth. Elizabeth has been kind of uh, joking around back and forth with me about being on my broadcast court. And when I'm commentating, she's winning. Oh. Her and uh, Sarah were playing last week and played every match on our court, basically. On the winner's side, won, went over to the other court, lost that game, went to the <laughs> loser's bracket, came back over to our court and ended up winning everything else to punch their ticket to broadcast tonight. So let's we'll see if she's on to something. If that's the case, I'm sure Sarah and Elizabeth both would uh, want me to make my ESPN debut. <laughs> And I'm down. <clears throat> I'm down. I can commentate here or on TikTok. Wherever you guys want to watch me. Elizabeth picking up three points in that round. Sarah has one off the back. Talk about Sarah Cassie this season just improving her PPR and I think all around game. Just has a certain confidence about her now when she comes to the court. Jake Brandon was talking about how she was the most impressive player last uh, open, I believe, Brighton, Michigan. Just. I mean, I think so in Florida also when we watched or, yeah, her. Yeah, it was Florida. Was, was it Florida? About, yeah. yeah. She, she was very impressive in not just the women's division, but singles as well. I only got to watch, like, the very end of women's, but she was not holding back at all. Mm -hmm. See how Elizabeth wants to play this. I kind of like an airmail. She does as well. Oh, she gets nice. the airmail and the quick collect in front. Nicely done. Gets that one to go, plus the one in hand for four points. Let's take a look at this shot one more time from Elizabeth. Short, collect, stick on stick. Gets the bag on the edge of the red zone to go and takes the lead. L -l -l lead change, seven to four, Elizabeth Tennyson. Round number five with a 7-4 lead. That one more than likely going to fall back in for Elizabeth. Sarah might be in a little bit of trouble here. Well, Elizabeth is definitely not helping her out any. She's doing a good job getting around everything. Yeah, another sticky side fourth bag collect opportunity that Sarah's just off to the side on. Plus four more, 11 to four. Nice little run here from Tennyson. Women's bracket starting to kind of figure itself out. Winner of this one will get Peyton Haynes. Peyton and Elizabeth very familiar with each other. On the loser side, we got Vanessa Fillingham knocking out Katie Bartell. Good run for her. And Riley Schaff on deck. They're taking on each other on court two, it looks like. And the Maddie McBride on the other side waiting for the loser of this match. Can't get away from that BG on BG crime. It's everywhere. <laughs> That's what that police officer was here for earlier. 
so. It's really the first opportunity we've seen with Sarah since round two. Elizabeth has had every bag in the hole so far, but one off to the side here. Perfect blocker, trying to get back in the round. Airmail time. Up top, hits that one, nicely done. Both these ladies kind of go about the game the same exact way, you know, just straight business. Oh, yeah. This airmail right here was straight business, plus <laughs> two, 11 to six. First bag off to the side, creates an opportunity. Got the What's Up Brother crew in the background. Thirteen to six. Tennyson's first shot, nice blocker on the edge of the red zone. Back number three off to the side out of play. Sarah can use it as a bumper if she wants. For right now though, she's just going in. And finishes off bag number four to regain first throw. So we got a seniors game going up next. What's up, brother, in the background? How you doing, brother? <laughs> <laughs> what are they doing? Enemy pride. What is that? Everyone having some fun here in West Wego, Louisiana. Oh. Crowd, crowd, crowd's looking a little sketchy today. <laughs> Two more points for Sarah right there. Yeah, 13 to 10, trying to get back into it here. So we head back down to the right-hand side, the, the backyard.com side, if you will. Backyard.com, let's have fun. Check out their website for all of your backyard needs. They got some great ferny, uh, furniture and ferny. Pad, ferny they got some furniture. They got the uh, <laughs> the lights and the cooler that I was talking about there. My man Jeremiah Ellis makes his way to the main court to catch some action and watch some fellow broadcast players. Sarah, back on the gas pedal right now. Definitely going to pick up some points. Two more. Just catching up slowly. Great matchup over there on court 33. Mason Trader now takes the lead over Jacob Gore, 18 to 17. That is 20 rounds in. Winner of that one gets Cannon Hatcher. We could have that Trader on Trader finale that we're looking for. And by we, I mean me. I would love to see it. I'm sure you guys can find some website out there to watch their action through the bracket <laughs> before they head back to the championship match. But in the meantime, we got business to attend to here with Tennyson and Sarah Cassidy. Oh no, this could be big points for Elizabeth. If she can get that bag, she could pick up five. Let's see if she wants to go after. It looks like she is slick side down. Bag is away with a little bit of a tilt and she gets to collect. That is a huge five point bag at the right time. 18 to 12. Looks a little bit easier than it actually is. Slick side down, you want that stick on stick material. 
clips the corner, gets the left to right movement. 18 12. Big shot, Elizabeth Tennyson. Next up here on the live feed courts will be Frank Modlin and Damon Dennis. That will be for the seniors king seat match. Sarah looking to pick up a couple points. Back there for Sarah is in. After this round, we'll do a Bush's Baked Beans PPR check. Beautiful ladies, beautiful PPRs, beautiful beans, beautiful <laughs> cornhole, beautiful uh West Wego. She went after it, wasn't able to get it. And just like that, we got ourselves a game 18 to 18. Something tells me these PPRs are going to be the same. We'll take a look at it here. Bush's Best Beans, that beautiful bean company bringing you a 10.15 PPR for Elizabeth Tennyson. She's got five, four baggers. Sarah, the exact same. Five plus five is 10, Jake <laughs> Brannon. Total four baggers in this game, 14 rounds in. Vibration knocks that one in from Sarah. Elizabeth sitting right on the edge. Now we got some Coletta pushing the pile, but she's off. Sarah staying sticky side down. Nice job driving through. Elizabeth's bag is out of play. She cannot afford to miss again. We might get a good back block here that could seal the deal. It's a little off to the side. Tennyson might be able to collect, but important that this bag in hand goes in. Slick side down, does not get it to go. It's off the back of the board. That's the three points Sarah needs. 21 to 18, Sarah Cassidy takes that one down. Here they were enemies to be on broadcast later as frenemies. But we come back, Frank Modlin and Damon Dennis in the seniors division right after this. Life's most memorable moments, they can happen anywhere. On sports biggest stage, or even in your own backyard. For those moments, seek a world beyond home. Find furniture, decor, grills, play sets, yard games, and yep, even cornhole. Backyard.com has everything you need to make your backyard summer ready all year long. Backyard.com. Let's have fun. Roll that beautiful bean footage. Bush's Baked Beans have always been the official bean of making burgers taste better. And now, they're the official beans of the SEC. And the official bean of whatever that is. Hey, it's tailgate fashion. Now this guy gets it. Oh, nuts. No, no. What planter's nuts is not, ah, nuts. It's, ah, nuts. Because planter's nuts are good. Planter's nuts. Ah, nuts. You can dash, zest, mist, and infuse. But may we recommend the just make the damn drink method. Behold, the 7 and 7. If this is your cocktail, Seagram 7 is your whiskey. Roll that beautiful bean footage. You've got the force field, the moat, the saucy sheriff. No matter your cookout plate strategy. Bush's baked beans make burgers taste better. I love me a saucy sheriff. Goes way up top and hits it! What? He knows it, goes up top and hits it! What a shot! A ticket to the championship and... Hits it. What a shot. 
life's most memorable moments. They can happen anywhere, on sports' biggest stage, or even in your own backyard. For those moments, seek a world beyond home. Find furniture, decor, grills, play sets, yard games, and yep, even cornhole. Backyard.com has everything you need to make your backyard summer ready all year long. Backyard.com. Let's have fun. Ah, nuts. No, no. What's Planet's Nuts? It's not ah, nuts. It's ah, nuts. Because Planter's Nuts are good. Planter's Nuts. Ah, nuts. You can dash, zest, mist, and infuse. But may we recommend the just make the damn drink method. Behold, the 7 and 7. If this is your cocktail, Seagram 7 is your whiskey. Way up top and hits it! What? He knows it, goes up top and hits it! What a shot! The ticket to the championship and oh. hits it! What a shot! Oh, nuts. No, no. With Planners Nuts, it's not, ah, uh, nuts. It's, ah, uh, nuts. Because Planners Nuts are good. Planters Nuts. Ah, nuts. You can dash, zest, mist, and infuse. But may we recommend the just make the damn drink method. Behold, the 7 and 7. If this is your cocktail, Seagram 7 is your whiskey. Welcome back in, Cornhole fans. Open number 13. Action continues in the seniors division. Bringing on the number one seed, Frank Modlin, to take on Damon Dennis. Frank Modlin's path to get here had a first round bye, defeats Keith Gregory, then John Henry, Steve Schrader, and then we saw Walter Ferris. Damon Dennis on the other side of the bracket comes in as your number six seed, had a first round bye, defeats Timmy Ledette, then Gunther Wrights. We saw Gooney and Damon Dennis to start off the live feeds. Gary Long after that, and then Andy Phillips to get this battle set. These guys have played each other quite a bit. Court number one action brought to you by All Cornhole. From the backyard to your pro journey, allcornhole.com has you covered. Check out Frank Mollen and his evolutions. He looks like he's throwing the 4.0 variety. Damon Dennis with that slick side down. Are they all the 4.0 though? Oh, that's a good point. You could mix and match this year. Yes. I don't know if I've seen anybody actually do it, though. He's got some decision making to do early. He's sticky side down. Big shot coming up, downward tilt oh. backside hits it. Gets a little bit more than he wanted to Frank's bag. Other than that, that was a perfect executed airmail, about 15 feet up in the air. <laughs> Maybe higher. Dear Lord. <laughs> Look at that bag flight. Huge shot as it goes off the top of your screen. Big shot down. Wow. A little bit too far to the right. Other than that, that was perfect. Nice shot there. One man watching in the background. Actually, three men watching in the background. Mike Ferreira, Anthony Eastridge, and Jeremiah Ellis. Ultra well represented there in the background. Here's the man of the weekend, Jeremiah Ellis. Shootout <laughs> singles and regular pro singles championships on the line for him. First bag down the middle and in here for Damon Dennis. Frank Modlin does the same on the other side. Damon misses too far to the right-hand side. Couldn't Mario Kart that one back in enough? We've got to insert an overlay, a little Mario graphic when people lean like that. I think it becomes <laughs> insert sound or <coughs> something. Dun, 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 
Could oh cool. no. We don't Could've see this cool. often from Damon. Two bags oh. out of play. If Frank's oh, going to oh, capitalize. Oh. We're going to get some awkward knuckles <laughs> as we head down to the side. Oh, I saw it. I saw it. <laughs> Frank said, you know, it was a little awkward knuckles. I said, oh, I saw it. He almost tripped over the board these are two, trying to get over there. These are two, like Hunter Thorne, Frank Milan, and Damon Dennis are probably the most awkward knuckle clips. There's one moment, I believe it was Portland, Oregon, where uh, Frank Milan purposely held out an awkward knuckle there for Damon Dennis. <laughs> Damon Dennis caught on to it, just took a swing at him. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, get that crap out of here. <laughs> Again, Damon Dennis staying with a slick side down on the bags. Looks like Frank Modlin is doing the same thing, throwing slick side down. Remember we're talking to Damon Dennis in Ohio. He's sitting next to Landon Crabtree. Landon Crabtree, you know, throws a sticky side, tries to manufacture points, and Damon Dennis says, slick side bag goes in the hole. That's very true. You young ones are the only problems with us throwing only slick side. <laughs> <laughs> I say, he said the object of the game is to get the bag in the hole, right? <laughs> I said you can't argue with that. Exactly. It's, that is not the object of the game right there. Off the back towards that backyard.com billboard. Damon takes advantage at least for now. Looks like Frank Modlin has done experimenting with the foot planted stage and he is back to stepping over the line now. I've had many talks with him about this step over the line and how it improves my game and looks like he's going right back to it as well, finding himself in this king seat match. You think it improves your game? I do 100%. I talked to him about it because it keeps me on track, it keeps me in that straight line. <laughs> he's giving himself <laughs> some awkward knuckles. <laughs> The old, the old point, and then they self knuckles. So you guys. have to step over the line to keep yourself in a straight line. It's, I think it's like, like so for me, I equate it to my daughter's softball pitching. When she's pitching, you, you have what you call a power tee. So you're trying to pitch on that line tee, going straight towards the plate. It helps you throw strikes. Why can't a your tee be behind the line? Well, because whenever you pitch a softball, you don't <laughs> go backwards. You pitch a softball towards home plate. So just take a step back. You can't do that on softball. You have to stay on the mound. So it's the same thing. You're stepping towards the plate because that's where you want your ball to I, go. I used to pitch in softball, but I'm a step you, in front of the line. Did you step backwards towards second base when you were throwing home? No, but I also exactly. didn't have a line that I'm supposed to stay behind. Technically. <laughs> Technically. You, did, you have a mound you had to keep your foot on, which is what he's doing. But I think it definitely helps me out and looks like he's going right back to it. It helps him out as well. I think it's crazy. Crazy, man. Crazy. That's corn nuts. Corn nuts crazy. That's absolutely corn nuts. That's what their slogan should be. I'll help them out. I'll talk to the PR department. <laughs> Meanwhile, both players avoiding that bag in the front. I want to see Frank go after that bag. I don't think he will. <laughs> but if he does, it'd be pretty cool. He does not. He goes up top, oh no. and it does miss to the left. Double D is going to get some more points there. There's Goonie in the background waving to <laughs> everyone back home. Ten to four here.
Dennis Cotter checking in as well. What's up, Dennis? Welcome in. International pro, Dennis Cotter. So he drives right into the pile. He steps out. He knows his tilt on the bag. Hits the pile with good enough speed to get everything to fall. Everything down and in. Let's give you guys an update in the juniors bracket. Jacob Gore was able to finish off Mason Trader. Jacob Gore is now underway on court 33. Finds himself down to Cannon Hatcher, 9-6. to six. Winner of that match will play Ryan Trader for the overall championship in the juniors division. Before we get to that, though, we'll go back to the ladies. Sarah Cassidy will take on Peyton Haynes for the queen seat. Nice. 10 to 6 here, though. That one's off to the side. Frank looking to get a couple points to get back into this one. Thirteen opens in Allison, New Orleans, Louisiana. I know, it's like the season is just starting to pick up and before we know it, it's gonna be over. Only three left, finishing off at the end of the season. Canton, Canton Ohio. Ohio. Did you go to that one last year? I did not. Canton was fun. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool right there at the Hall of Fame. Teaming up with the NFL players for Super Bowl. We'll see that here in a little bit. I'm super excited about that. Excited to see Brandon Cooks. I'm going to ask him if he remembers playing on my fantasy team <laughs> five years ago. It's probably the biggest moment of his life, actually. I'm going to ask him to sign my Brandon Cooks Saints jersey. Twelve to ten, Modlin at the lead in first bag. He's down and in. I see some corn in the bayou boys in the background there. They've always been generous to me. Uh, last time we came down here, they gave me one of those cakes, New Orleans tradition that. Has the baby in it? The king see? cake? Yeah, the king cake. Gotta find the baby. It's I good wouldn't. luck if you get the baby. I was on a yeah, I was on a diet uh, last time they brought that, so I didn't really get to eat it, so fair game now. It's uh like a cinnamon roll. Yeah, so good. So good. It's kinda like that it's kinda like that strawberry flavored candy that your grandma always has at her house. You'd never know where it comes from, but they show up. <laughs> I've never seen the king cake in stores, but every time I'm down south here, they bring me one. Damon oh, no. went after it, and he misses off the back. Very aggressive shot Was from that Damon a Dennis. On five? That is 19 to 10 now. I don't know yep. how many he scored there, but it is a bunch. Frank Milan comes in as the number one seed, showing why. Well, oh, that <laughs> one's off to the side. Let's see if Frank can get behind this. He's stepping out. I would like this one to be sticky side down, just try and get behind it and take away a block position. He elects to go I in, misses the bully. Frank's Leaving. trying to get out of this game. Yeah, he's thinking 12-pack. I'm thinking 10 on 8 wins the game, but we'll see. Slick side, that might still work for him. Just needs to drive through here to collect a couple points he needs to finish off. 21, first bag, too far oh, to the fall. side, but it is in Damon's lane. We're going to get a timeout here, and I don't blame him. I think there's enough to go after the airmail. 
The question is, how do you want to play this? You're chasing two points on the round. It's currently showing seven on five, four. He's got a bag in his hand. What does he want to do with it? I don't know. I think that's going to be tough to pull with an airmail. Frank's bag's on top of his a little. Just barely hanging in the hole. See what he decides. Going slick. Slick side down. He might be trying to drive through it. Go oh, up. he's going up. Slick side air mill. It's off the back of the board, and now we're looking at in for the win for Frank Modlin. Well, I guess technically Damon's got a chance to drag that bag to keep it at one, but he didn't go after it on the first shot. It's kind of shocking to me. I would have expected sticky side down. Ooh, he pulled his in also a little bit. Well, there's a little bit of life. Sticky side down now hits the airmail clean. Damon Dennis with an airmail a little bit too late. Frank Modlin gets the three points he needs. Takes that one down, 22 to 10. So Frank Modlin now has the king seat in the seniors division. Sarah Cassidy and Peyton Haynes, when we come back, we'll battle it out for the queen seat in the women's division right after this. Life's most memorable moments, they can happen anywhere. On sports biggest stage, or even in your own backyard. For those moments, seek a world beyond home. Find furniture, decor, grills, play sets, yard games, and yep, even cornhole. Backyard.com has everything you need to make your backyard summer ready all year long. Backyard.com. Let's have fun. Roll that beautiful bean footage. Bush's baked beans have always been the official bean of making burgers taste better. And now, they're the official beans of the SEC. And the official bean of whatever that is. Hey, it's tailgate fashion. Now this guy gets it. Ah, nuts. No, no. What's Planet's nuts? It's not ah, uh, nuts. It's ah, uh, nuts. Because Planet's nuts are good. Planter's nuts. Ah, nuts. Cornhole is more than a game. It is a battle of skill and precision. And when the game is on the line, you need a bag you can trust. With Lucky Bags, our Surefire and Pro Sniper bags are designed for all players and those who demand the best. Our lineup of Lucky Bags are made of the finest materials and built to perform with precision and accuracy. Get your Lucky Bags today and experience the bags that champions use. Visit LuckyCornhole.com to order now. Throw like a champion. Throw lucky. Roll that beautiful bean footage. You've got the force field, the moat, the saucy sheriff. No matter your cookout plate strategy. Bush's baked beans make burgers taste better. I love me a saucy sheriff. Oh, nuts. No, no. With planter's nuts, it's not, ah, nuts. It's, ah, uh, nuts. Because planter's nuts are good. Planter's nuts. Ah, nuts. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back here to West Wego, Louisiana. Things are starting to wind down, Allison, of our only broadcast of the evening. Women's, seniors, and juniors winding down. The ladies have made their way to the court. Peyton Haynes will now take on Sarah Cassidy. This is for the queen seat. Junior's king seat belongs to Ryan Trader. He's waiting for his next opponent. Right now, Cannon Hatcher is up 16-6 to over Jacob Gore. Frank Modlin, we just saw, take down the seniors division. He's still waiting for his next opponent, but the winner here will have the queen seat. And they will take on either a rematch or Vanessa Fillingham or Maddie McBride. So down to the final four ladies. All right. A 
Everything down the middle and in. Peyton Haynes looking for her first title. Sarah Cassie looking for her second of the season. Chat, who do you guys think is going to take this one down? I'll interact with you guys now on Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok. We'll get that camera switched. Look up. There we go. <laughs> Jake Brandon, what up? Welcome in, man. Good to see you there. Good to see you. Jake Brandon, one of the few people that think Maryland is more better <laughs> than the rest of the country. Oh, no. Whoopsie. Front of the board there from Sarah. Big points right there. Seen 12 Sarah on start. 5, 7. Yeah, seeing her start yep. a little bit slow. That's a Seagram 7. Brought to you by Seagram 7, the number one American blended whiskey. Oh, Sarah could pick up a couple here if she can get that bag to go. Pulling it closer. It's like they're teasing it. No one's able to free it up off that side. Mm. That might have helped Sarah. Still has to drive oh. through it. It does not free it up. That's a wash. Really thought that collect was getting ready to go. I do miss reading the chat sometimes. Some, sometimes I just read your guys' comments and I don't talk about it, but it's so much fun to see what bothers you guys. <laughs> <laughs> the wireless headphones, it's... New viewers come in two or three hours after the first time somebody mentioned right. it, but it's funny. Peyton running three wide now into the end of round number four. It's going to work. Cassidy off to the side. Peyton looking for the turn in. She's able to collect. In for two for Sarah. Gonna make it seven to two. She's on the board. We talked about it before. Let's see if Peyton wants to play a dirtier game or she wants to start firing off some blockers. I think that might be in her best interest is to try and play a little bit of a dirty game because that's not Sarah's game. Not happy with that. Yeah. I mean, the push is there for her to get both of them. It's a difficult push. It's like staying sticky side down. I'm surprised Oof. she elects not to go after the collect. Just goes in, limiting the damage to four. I think getting that seven-point round kind of changed her thought process there. Just go in. Keeps the lead. Matt says, watching cornhole is a much needed escape from work today. I don't I, I don't think the two need to you know, not coexist, just do the same. You have to find a way to sneak cornhole coverage on Fridays into your work life. It's just a given. I love cornhole Fridays at work. I love cornhole Fridays actually at the event better though, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Fridays for me are kind of rough. It's a long day usually. Today we got we got off the hook. Jake said Sarah shot a 10.31 over 100 rounds in Palm Beach. If Peyton wants any chance of winning, she's got a block. I agree, Jake. Oh, Ooh, look at how that. How do you block that though? <laughs> when Cassie goes up top and hits a three bag collect, what are you supposed to do? 
And that's why she puts that 10.31 PPR up, able to go up top, short airmail collect. Look boom, at that. Boom, boom, all three fall. She's not even phased by it. She's like, mm, it's just another day. I do that on a regular, she right? says. Eight to seven lead change. Peyton off to the side again. And this is where Sarah Cassie starts to heat up. Anytime you give her an inch, she's going to take a mile. Whew. Barely getting that one to fall. Another four bagger there for Sarah Cassie. She's down the middle and in. Bag number four for Peyton does the same. 12 on 10, seven nothing start for Peyton is gone. 10-7 lead now for Cassidy. Cameron Belvin says Sarah can throw <laughs> all four off or all, all four in, same face. Very true. Oh, whoopsie. Peyton falling apart a little bit. Yep. And here comes the YouTube chat talking about, see, it was the headphones. I told you the headphones. Sarah's going to move the bag. Peyton's got to see if that's the case. She takes them off, sets them on the ground. Mm, maybe not. Sarah just wants to take a look at this and see if she can do that three-bag drag thing again. Uh, Sarah keeps looking over. We have TVs here, and they have the board cams. So she's looking over at the board that she's currently throwing at to see how the bags are placed. <laughs> she went down there and looked at it in person, comes back and looks at the TV <laughs> again. They didn't move. Six side down, doesn't get enough of it. She's got one bag left. You can tell the difference between the veterans and the inexperienced players. Oh, gosh. Another bag in front. Is she going to throw out that bag on the board? I mean, Going slick side. Slick side down into the pile. Gets two to fall. One stays on the edge of the reds on the bag in hand is off the back. Currently it is, I believe, seven on three. Peyton. A little frustrated with the way things are going here. Tries to go short. Clips the bag, which should have been removed. I think it still would have stayed on the board. Sarah going to pick up three, making it 13-7. Yep. Earphone's going back in, mixing it up a little bit. Content team has arrived. Mind your P's and Q's. They will find you. <laughs> Headphones. Headphones going back in. Two more. Fifteen point run now for Sarah Cassidy. Nice look at the Versa court here from this angle. <laughs> you guys a chance to look at their bag flights. That one kind of on its side. Call that a shark bait block. Falls back over now. Going up. I think the TVs are a pretty good addition, though. Back. Sarah Cassidy definitely loving it. Got one guy in the crowd over here to my left, sitting front row, watching the TV. <laughs> <laughs> She's also used to it from the big broadcast Backside court and having the mill. TVs. Yeah. That's why I said veteran move. Now Peyton taking a look over at it. It's a wash.
Looks like Peyton's starting to give up a little bit. Don't give up. It's the queen seat game. You got to stay in it. There we go. She needs to take. She needs to take that Miller's Ale House slogan into uh, into consideration here. Oh. Eat, drink, stay a while. Stay on the winner's side. All right. There's a look at the bag flight. And the TV off to the side of your screen there. You see on the left side. Ouch. Another one off the back. Peyton just getting frustrated. Seventeen to seven, a seventeen point run here for Cassidy. We're twelve rounds in. Sarah Cassidy throwing a nine four five. Peyton Haynes with an eight five five, but story of the game so far. Four bags on the no. ground and a few of them right there. Whoopsie be. in front of the board. It's gonna cost her. That could put Sarah on twenty. Gotta be in. Keeping an eye on them as they walk down to the other end. Peyton just continues to like look up to the sky like, what do I got to do? What do I got to do to find my throw again? Sometimes it falls yeah. apart this quick. You put together a phenomenal tournament. You get to this stage, you just fall apart. That could be the game right there for Sarah. Sarah's got one leaning. It's oh, in there now. It is. That's it. Peyton Haynes unable to get it together. Sarah Cassidy picking up right where she left off. Sarah Cassidy has the queen seat. Over on the loser side, Vanessa Fillingham and Maddie McBride underway on court two. 13 to 6. Vanessa in the lead. Winner of that one gets Peyton Haynes. We'll be right back right after this. Life's most memorable moments. They can happen anywhere. On sports biggest stage or even in your own backyard. For those moments, seek a world beyond home. Find furniture, decor, grills, play sets, yard games, and yep, even cornhole. Backyard.com has everything you need to make your backyard summer ready all year long. Backyard.com. Let's have fun. Ah, nuts. No, no. What's Planet's Nuts? It's not ah, uh, nuts. It's ah, uh, nuts. Because Planter's Nuts are good. Planter's Nuts. Ah, nuts. You can dash, zest, mist, and infuse. But may we recommend the just make the damn drink method. Behold, the 7 and 7. If this is your cocktail, Seagram 7 is your whiskey. It goes the top and hits it! What a shot! A ticket to the championship and oh. hits it! What a shot! Oh, nuts. No, no. With Planner's Nuts, it's not, ah, nuts. It's, ah, uh, nuts. Because Planner's Nuts are good. Planter's Nuts. Ah, nuts. You can dash, zest, mist, and infuse. But may we recommend the just make the damn drink method. Behold, the seven and seven. If this is your cocktail, Seagram seven is your whiskey.
Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, cornhole fans everywhere. Welcome back to West Wego, Louisiana. We're at the Ilario Center. Open number 13 juniors championship match up next. Ryan Trader has made his way to the court. He's waiting for his next opponent, which will be Cannon Hatcher, Wally K9 Castler, and Allison Baldwin here in the booth. Getting ready to have broadcast after broadcast after broadcast. But first, Allison, a rematch of what we saw earlier. What did you see in the first match, and what do you expect for the second one? I mean, I don't know that there's anyone in this building that could beat Ryan Trader right now the way that he's been throwing. He's hitting all of his shots. He's doing everything that he needs to do to take this tournament down. So, I don't know. It's going to be tough. Ryan Trader rocking the cool shades right now, making his way to the court with some style. You could pick up some cool style over there at the ACL merch booth or go to shop.iplayacl.com. Krista Massey over there. Again, tell her I sent you, and she'll probably give you something for double the price. <laughs> she's hard at work. Tristan off to the side there. Plenty of vendor booths in the building as well. All Cornhole BG. We got Nola. We got Lucky Bags, of course, Siva. Don't forget Sure Shot. And then Girls Throw 2 down there on the end. Live Feeds this weekend brought to you by Backyard.com, Bush's Best Beans, Seagram 7, Corn Nuts, Mike's Hard Lemonade, Miller's Ale House, All Cornhole, and like I mentioned, Lucky Bags as well. But we saw at the very end of that last match when they played against each other, Cannon Hatcher threw one between his legs and hit a perfect airmail. I mean, maybe Cannon Hatcher just needs to throw between the leg airmails the entire time. Maybe. That was pretty impressive. Well, it looks like he's got a different strategy in mind as he went to his bag of tricks, grabbed some new Nola bags, and makes his way to the court. So we'll see Cannon's throwing both bags. Let's we'll see what he decides to go with. Looks like he is electing to go with the, uh, what is this, orange or red color bag? They are red, Walter. Going with the red bags. <laughs> Let's see what chat has to say. Kim says congrats to Sarah. Kyle, what's going on, man? Commercials are fire. Thanks, buddy. I made them myself. I <laughs> shot them with my cameras and commentary. I did everything. I'm, I'm, I'm amazing. <laughs> what up, Sam? Welcome in. Say Doing hello it all. to Mrs. Baldwin. Hey, hey, Sam. Canine equals the goat. <laughs> Eric, thank you, man. Thank you, man. I think <laughs> you're looking. I think you're looking pretty fly yourself, oh, if I gosh, must say here we so. Go. All right, so they have the bags decided on what they're going to throw. The crowd has gathered in. Trey says, Cannon moved to Louisiana this year. Kid is so good. We will see. There's the bag spin. We are ready to roll, chat. Let's go ahead and bring on the board cam. Get you guys set and ready to go. TikTok will get you switched right now. There it is. Boom, championship match. Where's Jeremy Frazier asking if this is the ship when you need him? And there it is again, right where he left off. Ryan Trader, huge collect in round number one. Cannon looks to his game has improved and cleaned up that one as well. Struggled a little bit the first time we saw him. No need for a shot clock here. These boys are going to rapid fire. And bag number four struggles for both. Ends up being a 10 on 10 wash. Take a look at this again, Ryan Trader, the human highlight reel as of late, slick side down, gets the left to right cut on the edge of the red zone. Perfectly done, first bag here is down the middle and in, Cannon Hatcher matches. Second bag in as well. Ryan hits that airmail perfect. Oh. It's going to be three for Ryan. 
So just like that scoring is started, let's take a look at their pass to get here. Ryan Trader, 21 to nine over Riley Din, then 22 to six over Josh Torres. 22 to 13 over Bryce Forbes, then 26 to nine over Sammy Soto. Played Cannon Hatcher once, 23 to two in the King seat match. In that match, 13 rounds, Ryan Trader threw an 11.23. Cannon Hatcher over on the other side of the bracket. He comes in as your 14 seed. Defeated Blaine Fryricks, 30 to 16. And then 23 to four over Landon Bass, 24 to 16 over Jacob Gore, 21 to five over Zach Aiken, then fell to Ryan Trader. Defeated Jacob Gore, 23 to six to get back to this point. Finds himself up five to three there with a big five point round. Trying to force game number two. Oh, what a great bag. <clears throat> Ryan not happy with that push. Trader tried to sneak around that one. I think the most impressive thing for me, nice collect from Cannon, big round here for him. The most impressive thing for me is how quickly the juniors are able to process what they want to do for the next shot. For sure. Let's take a look at this one, see how he processed it really, really quick with that hard tilt, getting it to go back in at that one, two o'clock position. Nicely done, seven to three on the scoreboard. to the left a little there for Ryan. Ryan stepping out, he might go after this. And he's gonna give up four. This game already going better for Cannon in the first one, 11 to three lead for him. What is happening, Walter? Well, Ryan's missing. <laughs> that doesn't happen very often. He needs to stop doing that he if he's does gonna need try to, and win this. He needs to knock it off. But Cannon Hatcher definitely improved from the first game. He's able to hit his collects here this time. I can't remember what bags he was throwing the first game. I feel like it was the red ones. I wonder what the difference is between these bags and the ones that he was throwing. It's the color. <laughs> you think it's only the color? <laughs> no, I think yeah. they, I mean, they look like the same, at least print. I'm not sure if they're the same series. Um, for those of you that don't know, with NOLA bags, they, they, they use different materials than most other bag companies do. So, um, you know, it, it's something you have to kind of adjust to get used to. But whenever you do, man, they're pretty nice bags. I like the mud bugs once I broke them in. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Did you win with them a lot? I won a couple times. All right. I, dab I dabbled on winning. <laughs> it was kind of fun for a little bit. Then you decide to let other people have a chance. Well, I'm much better at this than I am at this game, so. <laughs> it was worth it. I'm way worse at Cornhole now that I do this. Ryan's going to step out and go after that bag. Clean Big airman. shot. Yeah. See if that gets him going. Never mind. Cannon right on point with that cut again. There, he got it that time. And that airmail is going to work as Ryan had a chance no. to go in. The airmail works. The regular shot, not so much. Could have gone in for two, off. but off the back to give up one. Wow. Let's look at this airmail. Not much on the edge of that red zone, but Trader able to get just enough to peel it in. That was magic. <laughs> Bloop. Got him. Here we go. Rolls and pushes galore in this one. Sticky side push. He wants to leave that one there. It's a little bit off to the side, but should be able to collect it. Whew. 
<laughs> Jeremy says they're averaging 35 to 37 seconds per round total. Eight bags in. <laughs> no need for the shot clock. We got this. Yeah. Very different from the Frank Maudlin, Damon Dennis <laughs> game that we watched earlier. It's a good back block. Trader with a hard Ooh. tilt, unable to get around the corner. Did not use the blinker, can't switch lanes. <laughs> oh, man. It's getting way too much bounce on this one. Trader's starting to look a little frustrated. Good collect there from Cannon. Another five? huge round. Yikes. 17 to 5. Trader walking down to the end, trying to figure out how to fix it. Meanwhile, Cannon's got everything working for him. Six side come across. Left to right, he goes in. Nate says, Trader doesn't even care that he is there. Where's the food? I know, exactly. Exactly, Nate. Right, this is interesting. Two by two right in front of the red zone. Hatcher, strong tilt, doesn't get over the pile. Can Ryan Trader cut it? No, he goes airmail instead. Oh, way too short. short. Up top, short oh, again. Trader just a little bit off. And is it's going to cost him a couple points. That is a big league, four on two. Two more points, and we're going to get a game two here in junior singles. Maddie McBride's run comes to an end. Vanessa Fillingham takes her down. Peyton Haynes next. Sarah Cassidy waiting for the winner of that one. I think uh, Ryan gave up on this game. He just wants to go to game two. He didn't want to fight back. He just wanted to start fresh. Going right into the game. Ryan punching his palm to try and regroup. Cannon with the spin. Looks like they are ready to go. There's the knuckles. We will crown ourselves our first champion here in West Wego, Louisiana. Open number 13 at the conclusion of this match. USA Cornhole Juniors Championship on the line. Ryan's got a few of those trophies at home already. It's a good back block. Hard tilt there from Trader. Rolls over the top. Moving the bags in front of the hole closer to going in. Cleans it all up nice. Huge push from Cannon to wash it out. 12 on 12. Seagram 7 social. Everything down the middle in the end. In, in. Cheers, chat, on this nice roll. Followed by a huge push through there from Cannon. That's more like it. That looked like a championship match, Allison. That's professional cornhole. Trader off oh. to the side. Oh, the glasses came off for I a second. I can see clearly now the shades are gone. Then they're back on. <laughs> He's like, did that really just happen? He's Let me like, look That's again. where the board is. Down the middle there. Going to give up two. Two nothing star. Denny Mallon in the chat. What's up, Denny? Welcome in. Denny Mallon, uh, another international tour feller. Europe, Canada, Australia, everywhere. Anthony, what's up? He does up? look cool. Sticky side. Very Misses cool with the, the left glasses. or right I love movement them. on it. 
Trader now calling a timeout. I think he wants to just kind of let him stew at this for a little bit longer. He won the king seat game with the glasses on, so they can't be doing too bad. Yep. Going down to get some aiming juice. Got to stay hydrated. Got that water imported from Miller's Ale House. Eat, drink, stay a while. <laughs> Ryan Trader oh, trying to nice. stay here a little bit longer. Timeout was worth it as he's able to drive through. And that last timeout worked. It might have paid off for Ryan. He's slowing the pace down. Got a nice lane. There we go. That's better than in right there. Very impressive that Ryan Trader is actually able to slow it down considering he. Far soap. Bar soap, instant thought. Six side at Got that it. one gets it. Plus six. Nice. Huge shot from Ryan Trader. The timeout and the aim and fuel from Miller's Ale House pays off. Look at this. Big shot, six side down. Gets him to go on the back of the red zone. Six to two. Ryan Trader has broke the streak and is ready to roll. Hold your spot. Is open for sit and go number five. Sit and go number five. Hold your spot. Is open. <clears throat> Able to bring that one in. That bag didn't move like I thought it was going to on slick side. Stopped pretty quick. Nice, nice job cutting and collecting from Cannon Hatcher. Slick side down from Trader. These boys are starting to put on a show. That bag kicks off to the side, so opportunity for two. There's a good look at the Hammonds and Remick. What's up, brother, as they are heading to Winthrop University. Some of the first names to drop, Winthrop University putting together quite a solid squad next season. Great to see that young players are able to go to college playing cornhole now, earn an education, throw in some bagos. Ryan on this end last time was taking a minute before each throw, which did him well. Then he went back to just firing, and now he's giving up points again. Yeah, I mean, it worked whenever he took that slowed down pace. Cam yeah. didn't seem to like it. I mean, Ryan Trader has a full dose of uh, the mind games from Adam Hissner last <laughs> time they played. And that's the reason why Ryan Trader's not on broadcast. And, uh, you know, if anything, he might have took a lesson away from it. It looks like he's continuing to reach up to want to take off the glasses, but he leaves them on. I think you have to leave them on now. You're committed. Hard tilt in that one. The bag on the hole doesn't look like it's going to fall. Ryan Trader looking over to the monitor. Hard mm. tilt on that bag. Could be an airmail time, or he's going for the hard cut again. Yeah, just trying to get back nice in hand. He does get it freed up. How did it fall? It looked like it was underneath both of those fly magic bags on the rim. But it goes in. Airmail time here from Trader. Hits it clean. Not what he wanted, but plus four. Nice shot. Cannon Hatcher here in game number two of the Juniors Bracket Championship with a nice cut collect. As soon as he hit the board, that bag started going. I'm telling you, man, the... The mud bugs, I don't, actually, I don't know what he's throwing, but the NOLA bags, they use different materials. You never know how they're going to play. This is the junior singles final right here. Ryan Trader had to be double dipped coming into this, and this is game two. 
So whoever wins this will be your singles junior champion. Hard push at the pile. Not what he wanted, but it still kind of works out. So one of each goes off the back. Chichel in the chat says moccasins by Nola. So thank you for that. As we walk back down to the left-hand side, Cannon Hatcher with a 10-6 lead in round number seven. This is game number two. Steve Schrader will now take on Tony Calone on court 17. Whenever that one gets Damon Dennis. Cannon's cut just seems to be doing a lot better for him now than on the first time these two played against each other. That's a huge part of his game, able to get that right to left movement on the board. For sure. So the bag switch might have paid off. Got oh, the professor, we, oh Anthony no. Ione makes his way to the court. Ryan Trader. That is so unlucky right there. That's on the slick side. Doesn't look like it's going to go. Cannon's taking oh, a look at it. Man. It is oh, moving. It, did it go. does fall. I, I was going to say. Right? I could hear the resin pellets falling from here. <laughs> I knew it was going. That's a Seagram 7 Phew. social. Brought to you by Seagram 7. Yeah. And then back to where he left off, first bag down the middle and in. Oh, wow. Bounced right over those bags. I'm gonna take a look at the TV over here. Figure out what he wants to do. Yeah, I think for the most part, all the players are liking that the monitor is right there for them to get a look at it. I like the back block. Up top of the nice. airmail, Trader likes the airmail. Huge hit. Cannon can't do anything but just nod his head in agreement. Was Up that? top, you guys have to use your imagination how that one plays out. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. We'll show it to you right here. Huge shot up top, Ryan Trader. Four bags in one shot. A little bit of a prayer at the end. That was risky with all those bags piled like that. He knows what he's doing. That's not his first time shooting an airmail. He Are you is sure? good. Sure. Anybody that would beat Ryan Trader is just going to have to hold on to that victory and tell the story every time you have an opportunity. That reminds me, Allison, did I tell you a story? <laughs> uh, when I played um, Ryan Trader? No, I didn't? Okay. Ten rounds in, 10 to 8 on the scoreboard. 10.5 PPR for Ryan Trader. Gannon Hatcher with a 10.7. Did Only Braden? 10 rounds, 11 four-baggers already, Allison. Did Braden play in the junior singles? I did not. Know. I have not seen him here this weekend. Someone was asking how he was doing. He's probably in school. Well, doesn't he have to, he won a bracket, didn't he? Yeah, but it's Friday during the day. It's school time. <laughs> Who goes it's like you guys, school you guys should versus be, cornhole? You guys should be working right now. You're watching cornhole, right? I need to get that pop over. Let's see if Trader wants to go at this pile again, slick side. Some Donald Cup in the background telling me exactly oh, how to do it. They're on their way. Braden's not here yet, but they are on the way. Got confirmation in the chat. Going slick side, hard at the pile. Oof. Sound like it hit a brick wall. Nothing moved on that one, but there is clutter around the rim. 
This is a very difficult shot for Cannon to get anything out of this. I think he's just looking to go for the clip. He does not. He goes into the pot. That's plus two. I think it was two points either way for Trader. It was worth the shot. <laughs> Kendra walking down says something to Trader, and they both laugh in, in agreement. <laughs> like I say, I love watching young talent. It's really, really cool to see young talent come in. But Cannon Hatcher has one of the coolest logos for a youngster. You can see it there on the side of his pants. If only we had a camera to get that shot, the C <laughs> and the H. There's the logo. Shout out to the truck. Camera number 19 of 30. Hard at work right there, showing shoes and pants. That's what we're here for. Trader gonna pick up two that round. Staying sticky side down, trying to hop over. It hits the pile and just kind of stops. He elects oh, to go no. roll on the first one. I think that was a mistake. I think it took away his airmail opportunity now. I think that bag number three right there should have been the oh airmail and a perfect plug. <laughs> Going up. Lands on the pile. Nothing goes. Hit it about exactly where he wanted to. The dominoes do not fall, though. Two more for Trader. <laughs> Cannon touching it, trying to figure out how much force <laughs> he had to put to get that to go. Nothing would have gone. 14 to 10. I think that airmail came one bag too late. Let's see if that will cost him. Ricky said, what was the logo on his pants? It's a C and a H. Stands for Cannon Hatcher. Yeah, I don't see it either. What? No. You don't see the C and the H? No. Hmm. I, I mean, like. To, I will have to take you and Jake back to middle school so you can learn your letters and your numbers because that is definitely a C and an H. I mean, I see it. Okay, now that you have said something, yes, I see <laughs> it. But I would have never, ever been like, oh, look at the C and the H on his pants. It doesn't look like a C and an H. Well, I had to point out the all cornhole star to you. You didn't see that either. Walter. She just waltered me on ESPN Plus. You yeah. just waltered me in front of my viewers? They can't hear you anymore either. You got a Walter and a, a red b mic button over here. <laughs> That's how you know you made it. Uh. I don't even see the new nice. all cornhole logo. We have it on the stream, don't we? Let's take a look at this cut again with the Professor Anthony Ion watching off to our side. Going in at that 3 o'clock position, as he would say. Dustin, I was actually going to say it's on his hat as well, but I feel like I've already been Waltered enough today. <laughs> well, Wally, you didn't learn letters until middle school. <laughs> Yeah. Again Great with cut. that cut. He's got it working. This is game number two. Fourteen to twelve. Seventeen rounds in right now.
You know it's on his right shoulder too. You can see in the H, you see it there. Yeah, and on, and on his hat. Maybe a little overkill. You know, sometimes people going around wearing their company logos all over the place just gets a little <laughs> played out. He's like, why are they only on me? Oh, no. <laughs> Brian said it's fine. It's Everything's fine. fine. Yeah, Everything's everything fine. Is fine. House is on fire. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's a wash. Full load wash there. Off to the side a little bit. Trader does a great job of staying center, side by side. Let's see if he can get that one in. He does not. Airmail time coming. Nope, not yet. He will not go after it. <laughs> Two moccasins sitting on the back of the zone will not fall in. Plus four for Trader. Puts him on 18. Ryan Trader's got his signature down the side of his jersey. You think he really writes that neat? Or is that one of those AI-generated signatures? Yeah. Or it could be like Jordan Camba. It's his mom's signature. Or his mom writing his name for him. <laughs> that bag is just sitting on the edge. Will not go in. Oh. Yeah. Well, there's the bus that just ran over Jordan Camba, drove by Allison. <laughs> I'll never forget, I was uh, sitting there online, and I was like, oh, cool, like it's one of these places that teach you how to write your signature. This is a great idea, and I click on it to see what link to go to, and like in the comments, it's like, what kind of idiot doesn't know how to write their own signature? This is the stupidest thing. I was, I was like, oh, man, I was like, that's kind of cool, but whatever. I was kind of, what do you mean? You don't know. I'm so confused. Like, I don't have a fancy signature, you know what I mean? So I was like. But you know how to write in cursive? I know how to write, yeah, but I don't have a fancy signature. Like, if I were to give autographs, you know what I mean? Because I've had people ask me to sign the bags. Oh, yeah, no, I, I, they're here all the time, lined up at the broadcast yeah. court waiting for pictures and signatures. And I'm just like, I'm just like, man, I, I want it to be cool. <laughs> well, hit your mom up. Big <laughs> shot sure right there to finish you. it off. He's able to cut around Ryan Trader. It took two games to do it, but he holds off Cannon Hatcher. So congratulations to Ryan Trader taking down the USA Cornhole Juniors Championship. We're going to switch over to the women's bracket. Vanessa Fillingham will take on Peyton Haynes when we come back. Steve Schrader on deck after that against Damon Dennis. Huge shots here from Ryan Trader. See you guys back in just a little bit. Life's most memorable moments, they can happen anywhere. On sports biggest stage, or even in your own backyard. For those moments, seek a world beyond home. Find furniture, decor, grills, play sets, yard games, and yep, even cornhole. Backyard.com has everything you need to make your backyard summer ready all year long. Backyard.com, let's have fun. Ah, nuts. No, no. What's Planet's Nuts? It's not ah, nuts. It's ah, nuts. Because Planet's Nuts are good. Planter's Nuts. Ah, nuts. You can dash, zest, mist, and infuse. But may we recommend the just make the damn drink method. Behold, the 7 and 7. If this is your cocktail, Seagram 7 is your whiskey.
goes way up top and hits it! What? He knows it, goes up top and hits it! What a shot! The ticket to the championship and Graham hits it! What a shot! Oh, nuts. No, no. With planners and nuts, it's not, ah, nuts. It's, ah, uh, nuts. Because planners nuts are good. Planters nuts. Ah, nuts. You can dash, zest, mist, and infuse. But may we recommend the just make the damn drink method. Behold, the seven and seven. If this is your cocktail, Seagram seven is your whiskey. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back here to West Wego, Louisiana. Winding things down here for open number 13, day one. Vanessa Fillingham taking on Peyton Haynes next. The winner of this one will get Sarah Cassidy. We will play these matches back to back. Steve Schrader will take on Damon Dennis off the court and then Frank Modlin in the championship after that one. Hope you guys are enjoying the coverage so far, no matter where you're watching. ESPN Plus, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, or ACL TV. Live feeds brought to you by Backyard.com, Bushes, Seagram 7, Corn Nuts, Mike's Heart Lemonade, Miller's Ale House, and Lucky Bags and All Cornhole. Day number one of three. Doubles action tomorrow and single Sunday. Take a look at the room around. Steve Schroeder right there waiting for his next match to get assigned. Vendors boost all along the wall if you guys are in the area. Looks like Steve Schroeder's heading over to court number 13. We are at the Alario Center in West Wego, Louisiana, just outside of New Orleans. Had a chance to head down to Bourbon Street the other day, dropped a few grenades, had a good time. Let's see if any one of these ladies would like to drop some grenades here as the bag has been spun. They're starting off on the right-hand side, the Backyard.com billboard in the background. Everything on the hole right now. One bag does fall. Mid-transition, slick side down from Vanessa. Everything can be watched this weekend on ESPN+. Plus. Make sure you guys check that out. ESPN+, Plus is going to be the place to go to watch all of your live coverage for this weekend, all the championship matches from the first kickoff battle. We'll conclude this weekend. Shootout, singles, shootout, doubles, women's doubles. Get the scoreboard fixed. 2-0 on the other side. I think they had the names correct. Just put it in the wrong spot on the screen. So there they go. Scott Bissell checks in the chat. What's going on, Scott? Good to see you out there this weekend. Having fun in my chat. Let's go. Vanessa, we saw her earlier on the stage. She had a case of the lefties a little bit. Both these ladies trying to get back to the championship, again to take on Sarah Cassidy. Sarah Cassidy is in the background over here on the right-hand side, watching and waiting for her opponent. Six to nothing start for Peyton. Peyton continuing where she left off from the strong run in West Virginia. 
Again, if you are just tuning in, Ryan Trader takes down the USA Cornhole Juniors Division. Frank Madlin sitting in the king seat of the Seniors Division. Vanessa doing a great job of freeing that bag up. going to now be six to two as Vanessa is going to get first toss here. Winner of this goes on to play Sarah Cassidy, correct? Yep, yep. Sitting in the queen seat. Yep, Sarah Cassidy in the queen seat. She's, she's hanging out. She's waiting. Got ourselves a lead change now, seven to six. Vanessa going with the back block. Peyton still having a little bit of trouble getting her bags into the hole. Looking a little frustrated. Another block for Vanessa. Peyton goes up, hits everything clean, unfortunately. Still got a bag to get the rest, though, so this is interesting for Vanessa. See what she wants to do. Yeah, it's tough. This is where that roll shot would come in handy for the women's division. A little roll cover wouldn't be too bad. Instead, she just goes right into it. Peyton going up again. Fingers crossed for Vanessa. Is it going to pay off? Lance Short gets one. Seven on six. Vanessa's fine with it. Peyton, not so much, but she does get the tied game. Yeah, she got out, of, she got out pretty furry. One point. Could have been big points. Thoughts and prayers to everyone back home, hoping the tornadoes aren't hit. Oh, wow. Yeah. And awfully windy back home, awfully windy. That is Anthony Eastridge over there. Yeah, in the Very background. Very excited about. Getting animated, picking up right where he left off on the TV. He was being loud. Is, I don't even think that's a real game. No. That has, it's just like a side game over there. Yeah, I think they're playing for Juju Bees and high fives. <laughs> he just won. <laughs> he just won all the high fives. Vanessa switching the music up a little bit with a 10-7 lead here. Music selection, very, very important, Allison. Do you have a particular song you like to throw bags to? Mm, nah. I used to listen to music when I threw, but it's not that serious anymore. I need Peyton to put on a happy song and smile <laughs> a little bit. Have fun with this game. I only see Peyton smile as she's walking up to the court. <laughs> other, other than that, she's pretty serious all, all the time. All business. All business. Happy with that block right there. Peyton going to go up. Yes. Gets the drag. Gets the peel. Nicely done. Awkward knuckles to finish. Good shot there from Peyton Haynes. 
Let's take a look at this one more again. Got her. Nice job. Gets the bag underneath. Players. And a couple points. Yeah. Got us a one-point game now. Players digging the monitors. They are loving the monitors. They're all using them. All right. If we could please have Mark Ford. Please head on over to court number 53. Mark Ford, 53, please. Oh, no. Bag just held up in the hole. She's going to give up two more points and the lead. 11-10. Peyton in the lead now. People saying that the scoreboard is blurry. You might need to check your settings when you log in. Make sure you're viewing at the highest settings. Sometimes when you log in, the update could set you back down to 240 or something. Make sure you're set at least 720 or 1080. And another lead change. Vanessa going to pick up two that round. Again, just kind of setting these teasers right around the red zone, you know, <laughs> giving us something to think about if it's going to fall or just try to see if Peyton will try and avoid it. But everything's dropping so far this round. Oof, that looks short out of her hand. Ends up being perfect position. Good, good, uh, will tap in. Misses the block too far to the side. She's angry with herself. Can Peyton capitalize? Slick side down. Yep. Gets it to go. Gets the drip. And <laughs> almost a smile. How about new? Mm, no. None for you. Peyton's actually got a pretty smile, too. Unlike me, I'm working on mine. Oh, that's cute, Wally. That's why I got my Invisalign going right now. <laughs> Chompers. Trying. I'm going to get my, my Anthony Iona here in like two years. His hair's on point, too. Do you see that man coming today looking like that? Jeez, Anthony cleans up. Looking sharp. He's got broadcast this weekend. Yeah. Got to be camera Actually, I ready. Think, I don't think he's broadcasting this weekend. I don't think so. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, I, I think don't know. he's doing most of the broadcast this uh. weekend. That's a wash. Ah. Where's camera? I'm, wor I'm working on it. <laughs> I'm working on it. I'm working on the beard, too. This is about 17 months and I'm not shaving. <laughs> oh, you see. Appreciate that, JB. Tell her I said what's up. This looks like that. Oh, man, that one was a rocket. Luckily, it found the hole. Oh, no. Again, she looked down at Peyton like, all right, throw your bag. 
Knock mine in for me. It's gonna be two more for Peyton. 15, Hard cut, unable to get it to go the rest of the way. And then Vanessa able to clean it up. These ladies starting to get right where they need to be to finish off this game and go to play Sarah Cassidy. Sarah Cassidy, I can't tell. She's still over there. 15-14. Or she made her way. No, she's, she's made her throwing. way to the courts to go practice. Over there on court nine, throwing some bags, getting ready. I love YouTube chat. Hi, Jennifer. Steve Schrader on court 13, up six to nothing over Damon Dennis. We will play more than likely whichever championship match is ready first. So if the women's are ready, we're gonna stay here in the women's. Great grab by Vanessa. Oh, and she misses her last bag. Peyton's gonna pick up two more. Did she just give herself knucks? <laughs> there she Pey is. Peyton calling for some aim and fuel. Look at all these cameras. We we find you, so no matter cameras. where you are in this room, always be camera ready, because we're going to find you. Shit pretty far away. You should see the replay. We got you eating that sandwich. It wasn't a sandwich. It was a wrap. No, it's not a wrap yet. We still got matches to play. Dooch. Do, do these work? No. <laughs> Why are my buttons working, truck? I just did. They didn't do anything. Slick side push down. Peyton Haynes gets the collect. Vanessa with two off to the side. She's got to grab one of this is over. She's wanting to know if she can switch sides to make this shot. Peyton says no. <laughs> Not going to let her do it. Are we going to get an airmail attempt or a slick side down push? <laughs> Look for a second like she was thinking about throwing that one left-handed. <laughs> the commish is in the building. Uh-oh, time to be serious. Vanessa is very serious about this shot. Slick side down, going after it. Doesn't get it to fall. That is going to do it. Great run there for Vanessa, but Peyton Haynes ultimately takes that one down. So that championship match is set. Peyton Haynes and Sarah Cassidy whenever we come back here in West Vigo, Louisiana. Life's most memorable moments, they can happen anywhere. On sports biggest stage, or even in your own backyard. For those moments, seek a world beyond home. Find furniture, decor, grills, play sets, yard games, and yep, even cornhole. Backyard.com has everything you need to make your backyard summer ready all year long. Backyard.com. Let's have fun. Roll that beautiful bean footage. Bush's baked beans have always been the official bean of making burgers taste better. And now, they're the official beans of the SEC. And the official bean of whatever that is. Hey, it's tailgate fashion. Now this guy gets it. Oh, nuts. No, no. What planter's nuts is not, ah, nuts. It's, ah, nuts. Because planter's nuts are good. Planter's nuts. Ah, nuts. You can dash, zest, mist, and infuse. 
But may we recommend the just make the damn drink method. Behold, the seven and seven. If this is your cocktail, Seagram seven is your whiskey. Roll that beautiful bean footage. You've got the force field, the moat, the saucy sheriff. No matter your cookout plate strategy, Bush's baked beans make burgers taste better. I love me a saucy sheriff. Goes way up top and hits it! What? He knows it goes up. Welcome back in, ladies and gentlemen. More cornhole action here in West Wego, Louisiana. After this, the women's championship match is set. Peyton Haynes takes that one down. Peyton Haynes will now take on Sarah Cassidy. If you're just tuning in, Ryan Trader has already taken down the USA Juniors Championship. Seniors bracket is underway. Frank Modlin waiting for his next opponent. It's either going to be Steve Schrader or Damon Dennis. I talked about Steve Schrader wants to win today, he said. I'm not going out last night. I have a mission. It's to win seniors. It is a tough task. Damon Denniston, Frank Modlin. But ESPN Plus action now. What do we got later on today, Allison? Who's playing who, where? I wish that I could tell you, Walter. Yeah. Yeah, so. I wasn't able to find that. I'm still looking through things, trying to uh, find that email. So, women's uh, doubles action later. I know that's going to be Sarah Cassie and Elizabeth Tennyson taking on Deb Odom and Isabella Soprano as both the ladies have made their way to the court. So. We'll show you guys a... We have uh, I can tell you who won their brackets hey, last. I don't know who's playing who. Oh, there we go. Look at this. That's the times that you guys get to watch. We'll show you who's... So playing. our pro singles... Bracket winners are Jeremiah Ellis, Braden Wilson, Adam Hisner, and Gavin Cano. Our shootout single winners are Tony Smith, Jeremiah Ellis, Eric Davis, and Ian Cripps. So there you go. So shootout singles tonight on ESPN Plus at 6 p.m. Doubles at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. Broadcast after broadcast after broadcast. I'm really looking Let's forward to all of that. Yeah, I just I want to I want to I want to know who the winner is going to be already. I can't I can't wait to just sit there and stand behind the court for four broadcasts in a row. I apologize in advance if I <laughs> do anything stupid on TV, but I'm just going to have fun with it. Very very excited as we make our way down to the court. The ladies are starting. They're down and backs. Gives us a second to interact here with the chat. So, chat, uh, who are you guys wanting to see tonight on ESPN Plus? Or who are you guys wanting to see win here between the women and the seniors that are left? As the ladies go ahead and bump knuckles, and we are ready to go. Gives me a second to thank our sponsors, Backyard.com, Bush's Best Beans, Seagram 7, Corn Nuts, Mike's Hard Lemonade, Miller's Ale House, All Cornhole, and Lucky Bags. Uh-oh, Peyton, bag number four off the back onto the ground. Three nothing start there for Sarah Cassidy. I believe the first time they played, let me double check on this, but I think the first time they played against each other, Sarah Cassidy was off to a quick seven nothing start. And then, uh, I'm sorry, Peyton was off to a quick seven nothing start. And then Sarah Cassidy came back, rattled off 22 in a row to finish that one 22 to seven. Matter of fact, it's even more dominant than that. Seven nothing start. They only washed two of those remaining 11 rounds. So Sarah Cassie scored every single time. That's gotta be demoralizing. Oh. I mean, if I can't stop my opponent, 
just feel like giving up. Sometimes they're unstoppable, Wally. Sayer firing up a block on the edge of the red zone, side by side now from Peyton. Nice replacement. It's a great job kind of hugging that right side, not helping Sarah out. She's out of bags, might get a roll attempt here from Peyton as she looks at the monitor. She's got a good roll bag. Oops, She's got the hard goes. tilt on it, hits the gap, doesn't get it to go though. Hit a little too low on the board. That's gonna make it three to two and see if she can get started. Again, Peyton looking for her first championship. Steve Schrader in the lead over Damon Dennis, 12 to two over there on court, 13. That is 14 rounds in, both players throwing around to 10, 10 and a half PPR. Back on the rim does not fall. I like that blocker to start off this round. This is what we kind of talked about first game, Allison. She see just if Peyton's going to fire off blockers. Pushed straight through it, though. <laughs> Didn't phase her at all. Got to keep putting her to the test, though. <laughs> and that one misses. Nice job cutting around the right-hand side. And it's not going to slow Sarah down. So the blocker works for Sarah Cassidy instead. Backfired on her. Whoops. Ooh. One looked like it was going to be in front of the board. We've seen Peyton throw a few short of the board. That time the blocker works as Sarah Cassie's off the back. This could be a big round for Peyton. So just like that, Peyton now retakes the lead. Brandon says Cassidy's coming for Cheyenne. She definitely is. I like to see it. I mean, we watched her take down Cheyenne in Florida. When was the last time we saw yeah. that happen? Look, look dominant doing it too. Very, Absolutely. very strong season. Absolutely. For Sarah Cassidy, Jacob Quintal talking about wanting to see Jeremiah. He says Jeremiah's taking it all down. Get plenty of time to watch his coverage. And it falls. <laughs> She's like, excuse me, please fix that. Sarah will turn around and adjust the score. And 
again, firing off the blocker, trying to force Sarah to make difficult shots. Looks like push here, opportunity for Peyton. Oh, she's staying sticky side. Went with the roll, hits too much of the side. Doesn't get it to fall. Let's see how she handles bag number four. Might be another roll attempt as both ladies took a, take a look to their left at the monitors. Oh, she went up. Nine drive gets two to fall. That makes it seven on three here, heading into the final bag for Sarah. And the airmail awesome. misses, so plus four. Hard tilt there from Peyton, unable to get over the pile again. She's kind of hitting the board and not really getting that bounce reaction that she's looking for. Sticky side, oh. airmail hits it. Big shot. Leaving the blockers in place, forcing Cassidy oh, to go no. up. And she's off the back. They're going to check, I believe it's three. Five on eight. Peyton's got a little bit of pep in her step now. She's looking a little happier. Everything is fun when you're winning, Allison. <laughs> Everything is fun when you're winning. <laughs> so very true. Why is the volume so low I can barely hear you? Hmm. You tried the buttons? <laughs> push, push the volume buttons? But yeah, if there are any issues, the guys, uh, if that doesn't work, uh, let us know. We'll try and make some adjustments. We want the best possible viewing pleasure for you guys, you know? Wherever you're at. Just going bag for bag this round. Yep, Taking everything a little. Down and in another Seacom 7 social. Everything in the middle. I'll drink to that, Allison. Cheers. Cheers. Let's go. Volume is fine, everybody says. Right on, right on, right on. And type hashtag V for volume. <laughs> see if she can get it to cut around. Oh, she just goes straight up. Peyton's airmail is a that line coming. drive. <laughs> Cassidy does the same, but it helps out, Peyton. Staying nice. right there. Three airmails in a row for these ladies. Can Sarah get the collect? Nope. She pushes through, but the bag in her hand is off the back of the board. How about that? Let's take a look at these ladies throwing these airmails. Boom. One for Peyton. One for Cassidy, and another one to follow there for Peyton. Makes it 17 to 5. The bag a little off to the left, but it's still gettable for Peyton. Shooting those airmails. Does not look like that oh, bag is no. going to fall, and Cassie lays up on bag number four. I guess that's uh, the fourth bag blocker you were talking about there, Allison. Right? Bad idea? Yeah, I wouldn't have suggest that ever. But, you know, do what you got to do. Not my game. <laughs> not that my one. zoo, not my monkeys, I believe was the saying. That's not what I said. I said... 
Not my circus. Not my not circus, my monkeys. not my monkeys. Sorry, sorry. Do what you want. Score, score update for Steve's game. I got you. Steve Schrader, Damon Dennis, 12 to 7. That's in round number 20. They're going on their 21st hour of that match. That is to get back to the championship to take on Frank Modlin. We'll bring you possibly that game two. Yeah, we're on pace here for <laughs> game number two. So <laughs> if everything follows the trend, seniors will go game number two. We'll be done by 7 p.m. For our short day of broadcasting. Exactly. But I will enjoy it every step of the way. Oh, hit the dead spot on the board. I'm kind of living my life now by Miller's Ale House's slogan, now that I know what it is. Eat, drink, stay a while. And when you're watching the seniors division, it's definitely oh, that. Oh, no, that could be five right there. Might be more. She's not out of bags yet. Airmail time. Steps back in. Bag is away, hits the backside, gets the airmail to go. That is indeed 5.17 to 10. My math was mathing that time. Good math, good math. Great job there by Peyton, trying to cut around to the right. Got two bags just hanging in the hole. Can't really hear just what they're saying on the PA system. Hits it perfect. I feel like I have all these voices in my head that it's are just, just speaking the, to me. It's just the PA system <laughs> echoing. Oh. Get the. The drone spying on us as we head into game number two. Peyton Haynes takes that one down. 21 to 10. Game number two. Seniors division wasn't ready anyway. All double dips all day. Steve Schrader, 12 to 9. Look at this one. I got my 21 wish. 21 rounds in. These boys are starting to wash over there. Wow, Score not moving. 21 rounds. An interesting little streak there of yeah, 12 on that. 10, 10 on 10, 12, 10, 10, 10, 12, 10. It's pretty neat. Neato. Damon Dennis, though, cracks that 16 to 10 with a 12 on 5. Uh, I brought attention to it and... It has turned on him. Is four all the way up? Peyton trying to get started here. Game number two, down two to nothing. Sarah Cassidy in the lead. She's got her aiming fuel now, though. Dad coming in clutch with the water. It's huge, huge, it's huge. We got a lot of Peyton and Sarah fans in the chat. Chat divided, I love it. Yeah, pretty divided evenly. Great bag by Peyton to sneak in there. Sarah trying to do the same thing, but's not able to. Peyton gonna pick up two. Two, two, game two, second championship of the evening. Ryan Trader already takes down the juniors championship. Damon Dennis, three Ooh. points away from advancing to his championship. Hit the dead spot again. Oh. 
Oh, Ooh, she hits that bag in the front of the board. Sarah goes in. She can pick up six points here. And she does. That's big time. Headphones again coming out for at least a second. Eight to two. Timeout. We need Court lots of water one. sips. Hey, you got to slow stuff out. down, mix it up a little bit somehow. Yeah, no, I, I like it. I like the, the timeout, take a minute, take a breath. Eight to two here, game number two. Still keep an eye over there on court number 13. It's 18 to 12. They've washed out the last few rounds. Damon Dennis in the lead, trying to finish it off. Again, both players over there throwing around a mid-10 PPR. Wow. It's a long game to have such a high PPR. Absolute battle. Frank has made his way there in the background behind Sarah. He's waiting for his opponent. He last played his last match, I'd probably say over an hour and a half ago. It has been a while. Meanwhile, we're kind of at a stalemate here, eight to two, washing out rounds again. Back to back, double four baggers. She keeps hitting that dead spot down at the bottom of the board. Yeah, Peyton always has kind of landed low on the board. Sometimes it costs her. Sarah not having an issue with that bag there. Mm. See so if she can sneak around again. She is able to even gets a little bit of a bully out of it. She's working it. She wanted to collect there, but she brings it closer. Sarah helps her out, finishes off her four-bagger, keeps her streak alive. Peyton, on the other hand, does not. Misses with a six. 14 to two. Huge haymaker out of nowhere. And just like that, Steve Schrader falls. Damon Dennis versus Frank Modlin for your seniors championship up next Good run, though, for Steve. Good, good blocker, now pushing into the pile. Nice collect. Sarah's giving a Peyton an opportunity here to get back into this game. Down 14 to two, you never know how many opportunities you're gonna get. Can she collect two points this round and regain first throw? 
So far, so good. One bag left, though. There it is, able to get that one to go in, plus two. Don't call it a comeback yet. I will not. Way too early. Damon Dennis and Frank Modlin there in the background have made their way to the court. Chatting it up before they play each other. Over or under two and a half awkward knuckles in the seniors game chat. Could be two more for Sarah right there. I don't like Peyton playing the bag for bag game with Sarah. Yeah, I think she's tried to block a couple times though, and it's just working off to the side, giving her bumpers instead. Everyone calling the over on the awkward knucks. Okay. I love to see it. We'll have the replays ready. Well we have an awkward knuckle awkward knuckle count awkward saying also. Damon likes to do a uh, knuckles after every round yep, and so and then it, there'll be lots of opportunities it all depends on if they start walking down to the other end or not there's the front of the board again that is a very interesting shot we saw this last time it generated huge points for sarah but sarah left that bag there on the front and then Peyton hit that bag so it stayed on the board so is that considered a timeout if they go move no, that, that bag that like is, that that is still legit Okay. Damon Dennis there and Frank Marlin chumming it up in the background. That one might be hung out to the side. This there could it be goes. it. Let's see if Sarah can sneak around. She doesn't need to. Peyton needs to go in here. She has to hit the airmail or it's over. Oh, she, she does not Sarah get in. it to go. Sarah goes in. That's going to do it. 12 on 5 to finish off the game. Sarah Cassidy takes this one down. 23 to 4. So how about that, Allison? Dominating Sarah fashion. Cassidy takes that one down. When we come back, chat, seniors division finals right after this. Life's most memorable moments, they can happen anywhere. On sports biggest stage, or even in your own backyard. For those moments, seek a world beyond home. Find furniture, decor, grills, play sets, yard games, and yep, even cornhole. Backyard.com has everything you need to make your backyard summer ready all year long. Backyard.com. Let's have fun. Roll that beautiful bean footage. Bush's baked beans have always been the official bean of making burgers taste better. And now, they're the official beans of the SEC. And the official bean of whatever that is. Hey, it's tailgate fashion. Now this guy gets it. Ah, nuts. No, no. What's Planet's nuts? It's not ah, uh, nuts. It's ah, uh, nuts. Because Planet's nuts are good. Planter's nuts. Ah, nuts. Cornhole is more than a game. It is a battle of skill and precision. And when the game is on the line, you need a bag you can trust. With Lucky Bags, our Surefire and Pro Sniper bags are designed for all players and those who demand the best. Our lineup of Lucky Bags are made of the finest materials and built to perform with precision and accuracy. Get your Lucky Bags today and experience the bags that champions use. Visit LuckyCornhole.com to order now. Throw like a champion. Throw lucky. Roll that beautiful bean footage. You've got the force field, the moat, the saucy sheriff. No matter your cookout plate strategy. Bush's baked beans make burgers taste better. I love me a saucy sheriff. Oh, nuts. No, no. With planters nuts, it's not ah, nuts. It's ah, uh, nuts. Because planters nuts are good. Planters nuts. Ah, nuts. Welcome back in, Cornhole fans. West Wego, Louisiana. 
Open number 13, day number one, winding down. We got the final match of the evening. So ending things early tonight, Allison, as we're getting ready to have our seniors championship match. Damon Dennis and Frank Modlin. We've already crowned two champions, Ryan Trader in the juniors division. Sarah Cassidy takes down another open title in the women's division. Damon Dennis, though, and Frank Modlin set to do battle right now. Frank Modlin in the king seat. Taking on Damon Dennis. What do you expect in this rematch here, Allison? Uh, a lot of bags, high PPRs like we just saw in the last senior game. I'm kind of hoping that Frank pulls this one out a little bit. <laughs> you, you don't want to go to another game too? Oh, not because of that. I was like, just Damon, think about how much fun we could have for another hour and a half. I, I would love all of the fun that that would bring me. However, Damon is a winner often in uh -oh. seniors. I'd like to see Frank win one. Well, we do uh, see a switch up here. Damon Dennis getting away from the Viper R's, going to the Psychos. Looks like he's just trying to play a little bit faster of a game. Frank Milan, of course, sticking with the all cornhole evolutions. I believe these were the 4.0s earlier. We'll take a look when a bag stops if they're the 4.0 as well. Double D, Damon Dennis wins the spin right there. Here comes the commish, Wally. The commish. Commish making his way to the stage. Taking in some senior singles action. Ross checking in from the UK, says, glad I stumbled in on this randomly. This game is so fascinating to watch. Welcome in. Whoa. Hope you are addicted. We will be here tomorrow as well for doubles action. See how high that bag was? Another one. Oh, my goodness. The air mails from Frank Milan right now setting the tone early. Putting on a show already. Damon back up and hits it again. These boys. Let's go. Another Look one with that. a drag that time. Huge round there from the seniors. Listen, Frank Modlin, double D. That was super exciting. That was pretty nice. I know <laughs> if, we get, if we get 30 rounds of that, I'm perfectly fine with it. I agree. Double D going backside twice. Frank went as well. And the final shot here from Frank Modlin peels the one underneath. Nicely done. That's professional cornhole. And unlike the juniors division, you get to see the first bag thrown here in the next round. That one is down the middle and in. <laughs> juniors would already be on bag number three. Had a little bit of fun with it. Uh, Damon Dennis was talking. I said uh, something about 80 rounds down and backs. So you're fine. Because we were, they were at the court about 10 minutes before we went live. I said, yes, about 80 rounds. He said, no, nah, for me, that's only 40 rounds. <laughs> so he's well aware that he has a pacing that most of us would go crazy over. Playing next to him, at least, that is. I want someone to follow him around and see how many times he flips his bag during a day. Seven. No. It's more than seven before every throw. <laughs> hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Four nothing start right there. Can agree to that. Unless, unless you're the live stream team. Always got to fix it. <laughs> Blocker there from Damon taking away center lane. Frank somehow thinks he could still collect this bag. He might actually be just trying to get a different angle. Wants to go right into the corner. Like maybe he was trying to put a replacement bag and bump his in. We're going to see an airmail right here. Four hours later. <laughs> 
Going up. Oh, it landed short and hopped over the whole unfortunate break there for Damon Dennis. I think he actually hit his spot perfectly. Ooh, ouch. Damon's going to take a timeout. We are going to get a timeout. He's going to take a look at this in person instead of on the monitor. <laughs> He's got his answer. Frank comes all the way across the board to One, hand him the bag. Two, three, four, five. Ten flips that time. Yep, that's uh, that's, that's the calibration that he needed to Up hit that in. one. Each each flip is a different calibration <laughs> depending on which shot he wants to go after. It's it's like a it's like that a tell. Would. It's like a tell. You know the pitchers. Yeah. Tipping the curveballs, Damon Dennis, 10 flips equals airmail. That would be funny if that's like actually how he did it. Like, all right, I'm going to throw the airmail and we'll flip it this many times. <laughs> you would know what shot he was throwing every time if you were his opponent. That was 10 right there. Let's see. Oh, not an airmail. <laughs> Everything in here, round number four, just down the middle and in. Five to four on the scoreboard. Double D trying to add to that lead. Frank trying to stop him from putting any more points up there. He gets Ooh. enough of it to fall in. I thought for a second that bag was gonna be stuck on the rim. Slick bags falling into the hole. That's a double four bagger, a little Seagram seven social. Damon putting a little bit of a tilt on that bag. He's trying to bring that corner in. Frank trying to do the same thing on the other side. Both players working. Right where he wanted it. Marlin now lining up slick side down. Trying to get the bags not to clog. Oof. Actually, I think that might have been sticky side down. That was, like that was. That's why it stopped like that. Yeah, it looked like he was trying to get the roll, but he side, rail, side rails it instead. He rolled the wrong way. Still going to get three points out though as Modlin misses again to the left. 8 4 now. Damon Dennis misses that opportunity there to get big points. I believe he stepped off the line and says, God dog it, which is darn it, I missed that shot in Kentuckian. Trying to bring you guys all cultured. I'm your translator down here in Louisiana. If you need any other things translated, let me know. How many rounds do you think these two have played against each other? It's been more than any other combo. I mean, I'm putting Matt Guy and Damon Dennis up there also. Frank Modlin, I don't think, has been playing as long as Matt Guy and Damon Dennis. Can Matt play seniors, though? No, but, I mean, they played a lot. Senior or not? I seniors, don't know. Kentucky, With as much as Damon Ohio. and Frank play seniors together, might be might be close. Well, this is Frank's second year as a senior. Yes, it is. So he hasn't really played that much extra. It would be nice if every matchup you could tell us bags being played. Yes, I will do that from now on. They are welcome back here to West Wego, Louisiana, court number one, where bags are being played. 
I got you, Brian. Appreciate the suggestion, sir. <laughs> Eight to four on the scoreboard. Mm. Round seven, first bag blocker off to the side a little bit. That should be in Frank's lane, though. Uh. Let's see if we get early airmails from Damon. Let's see him. Let's go. Yep. First one, 15 feet in the air, lands on his bag, almost got the rodeo. Instead, he frees up the blocker, giving Frank the lane. Frank pushes into that bag. Nothing falls yet. You can see that bag on the rim is on sticky side. A 4.0 patch right on the edge of the red zone. Slick side bag in hand was just released. We're going to get a timeout here. Damon Dennis needs to look at this and see if he can hit the bag and get the gravity to do the rest of the work for the bag on the far left of the board. It is on top of the other one. It might work. I think you go block here. He does try to go block. It's too far to the left. Modlin tried the slick side push last time. Didn't work. Yeah, he doesn't have a very strong bag, and with that one being on sticky, got it to go, though. Couldn't count. Is that 10? I lost track. I can't tell if he's flipping for an airmail or what he's doing here. We'll find out. <laughs> He's got his decision made, though. Guy in the background's excited for the oh shot. Oh, no. That's a fairly easy push for Frank. It's on the slick side. He's unable to get it go the rest of the way. Damon's bag is still sitting there on the edge. I don't think it's going to fall. <laughs> the commish to the left, heckling. Yeah, he is. From the sideline, says, got to throw it harder than that. Frank says, I know, I tried. <laughs> Eight to eight now, we are tied. Round number eight. Eight, eight, round eight to 8.88 p.m. We're doing great. <laughs> I'll never forget, fun Thanksgiving story. My mom was cooking the rolls, which she burns every year, by the way. <laughs> Welcome to the bus that Jordan Cam was on, Mom. <laughs> and uh, Different driver. She was, she was waiting for people to come over. The family was coming over at 3.30. It was like 11.30 in the morning, you know. We still had plenty of time. She comes in the kitchen. She looks, it's 3.65 already? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Started freaking out. And I was like, that's the temperature, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> Burnt the rolls. Oh. Fourth bag block gets him again. Um, Sarah is your women's single champion today. She was able to take Peyton down in game two. Frank going with a first round block. Going up. Interesting situation here for Damon. Let's see if he wants to go up top for it. 
Elects to go with the back block, and I think that's the right play. Let's see if uh, Milan wants to step out. There's a lane there, but again, that sticky side down patch right around the edge of the red zone. Take a time out to look at this pile. Modlin is sitting down there on the other side, hoping that they're going to fall just on him walking down. There's plenty of hold there. There's plenty of hold there. The commission is giving him permission to shoot it. Just gonna board it. It almost fell. All right, so now they gotta put the scores in, the confusion set in for that. Ryan Trader won the junior's bracket. Frank's first toss right here. There's a good look at Mike Ferreira. He'll be playing uh, this Super Bowl. <laughs> he just realized he's on TV. Caught him red-handed. He'll be playing the Super Bowl with Kendrick Bourne this weekend, teaming up with Damon Dennis for this season. He went from playing on his phone to he felt it. Right he felt the cameras on him. Yeah, right next to the corner of the bayou, boys. He's watching live feeds, you know. Who's up next? This is it. This is the final of senior singles. We've already got our junior singles champion, Ryan Trader. We got our women's singles champion, Sarah Cassidy. After this, we'll have seniors, and we are done for the day. Now, I'm going to keep an eye on Does Frank Milan choose when he wants to step over? <laughs> the inside or outside? I, I didn't see him do it there. Oh, oh, there's some, there's some awkward knuckles. Let's go. How many was that now, chat? Brian wants to know who's up next. This is it, Brian. Final match of the evening. I think this is game three of five already. <laughs> winner of uh, Frank Mallon sitting in the king seat, so winner of this match will be your seniors champion. If we go to game number two. Somebody wants to know why on the post there's two shootout singles and doubles for today and tomorrow. One is airtime. You can watch it on ESPN Plus live. Definitely get to ESPN Plus if you want to stay updated with all the cornhole information. Speaking of up, that bag is not up. It's a whoopsie. In front of the board, Frank Modlin. Opportunity here for Damon Dennis to retake the lead. Modlin's out of bags now. This is an opportunity here for Damon Dennis to sneak in for five. He gets it. Nice job getting in there. Plus five more, making it 13 to 10. Again here, game number one. Damon Dennis has to win two in a row. Damon opts for the blocker. And now Modlin going back to the step over. Maybe it's just when he has to throw a little harder. Maybe not. 
That one should drip in. It's on slick side. I think it's already moving. Yep, there it goes. I could hear it. Great hearing. <laughs> Oh, no, he gave it right back to him. What's that? What'd you say? Thirteen to ten, game one, round thirteen. Mahlo went sticky side. He was trying for a block. That's too far to the side. He's gone sticky. Ah, uh, yep, gone sticky again. Damon not getting any love right now with that drip on the left side. It's kind of stuck there. That bag should help it. Once he goes in, it'll push his bag over to the other side and maybe drag that one. <laughs> maybe not. Damon's looking at points unless Modlin can avoid taking him on the side. He's mm. going to get four out of it. And that's going to make it 17 to 10. Chat's looking for a PPR check. I gotcha. PPR check coming up right here, brought to you by Corn Nuts. Corn Nuts, crunchy corn kernels. 9.38 for Damon Dennis. Frank Mollin with an 8.85. Three, four baggers there for him. Just think, chat, this is only game one. Still got another hour left of this. Exciting. Riveting. Everything in here. Can it happen? Will it go in? It will, Allison. Seagram Seven Social Cheers. I don't have a drink. Ah. I gave you mine. Aren't I nice? And I'm very thankful for this energy drink. <laughs> it's, hit, it's hitting a spot. Water can only get you so far. Could use some of that number one American blended whiskey right about now, though. That'll get me going. I wonder what happens if you mix Seagram 7 with Mike's Hard Lemonade. <laughs> I mean, nobody makes lemonade like Mike's. I'll drink responsibly, but I will enjoy both. Maybe separately. And what'd you have really earlier? Is it the honey or the apple? What'd you have? I had the apple yesterday. Very is, good. Is apple lemonade a thing? I know strawberry lemonade. I mean, yeah. Cranberry lemonade. You can make apple lemonade. I've never Why had not? apple lemonade. Nice Good little push, hop there yeah. from Maudlin. Mid-round congratulatory taps. Mm. Love it. Knocks in Maudlin there. Damon's happy with that placement as he's able to bring the other one closer. I think Damon already knows he's shooting the airmail. Gentleman looking to the monitor to the left. Pushes right through him. They're not actually watching Cornhole. There's an episode of Murder, She Wrote on there. They're catching up. <laughs> nice airmail by Frank. 
to pick up some points. Let's take a look at this again. Elected to go airmail instead of sneaking around. Damon's like, what are you doing? I think I broke the truck, Allison. I think you did. <laughs> it's losing all of its water. <laughs> 17 to 12 again, game number one here. 16 rounds in. You don't know what Mercy Road is? I should have said Colombo. Would have had more people interested. Matlock was a there good one. There you go. Yeah. Mash. A lot of people <laughs> tuning in for Mash during cornhole tournaments. Your bad dad jokes, Wally. I don't have such a thing. They're all amazing. I don't. I think all the giggles might have been coming from elsewhere. <laughs> it might have been for me. I don't even know. <laughs> 20 to 12, though. Damon trying to figure out how to finish this off. Oh, look at that. Such a nice guy. Round number 17. 20 to 12. One point away from a game two. It's a first bag blocker. Straight Modlin not over. messing around with it. Straight to the airmail. Frank helping Damon out, pushing his bag in right there. He may have just won the game for Damon. Stepping out. Nice job able to sneak around. Now Damon's going to go after that bag. Yeah, Damon's trying to get the win right here. <clears throat> he is able to get the collect. Huge shot. Super awkward knuckles. <laughs> little twirl As around with the awkward knuckle at the end. That was a big shot there from Damon Dennis. We're going to game number two, chat. Here we go again. It's not over, folks. They're clapping. It's Half not the over. The crowd has no idea. There's the awkward knuckles to finish it out. What a big shot from Damon Dennis. We're heading to game two. They're going to spin it up. This is the final match of the broadcast for us. Before we head over to the big stage for ESPN Plus 2 action. Allison, you got that list there in front of you now? I do. Tell Let's us we see. Get what we get to watch. So for shootout doubles, you're going to see Zach Shibnard and Gage Landis taking on Eric Davis and Matt Sorrells. On the other side, you're going to have Austin Cameron and Vincent Frisch taking on Carson Getty and Hunter Thorson. Those are your shootout doubles. Uh, for national doubles, you're going to have Mark Richards and Tony Smith taking on Gavin Cano and Fisher Hamilton. On the other side, you have Ethan Walker and Alec Ryan taking on Ryan Squared, Ryan Wiedenfeld, and Ryan Smith. Then for your national singles, you're going to have Jeremiah Ellis taking on Adam Hisner. And on the other side, you're going to have Gavin Cano taking on Braden Wilson. And then for the shootout singles, you're going to have Jeremiah Ellis and Tony Smith playing each other, and then Ian Cripps and Eric Davis. There you go. That's Thank how the you. cookie crumbles, and That's we will find out crumbles. who's going to take it all down. I need Ryland Meyer and Bryson Corey to court number You know, sometimes I think cornhole's like a cookie. Give a few sprinkles. 
perhaps even a few nuts. <laughs> but that's what makes the cookie crumble. Mm, I can't giggle at that dad joke. That so, was that's terrible. That's a Bruce Almighty reference. That was a Bruce Almighty reference. How do you not know your movies? More of an Adam, Adam Sandler kind of movie watcher. Nah. David nice. Bate wants to know, Mish, are the shootout doubles happening tonight on ESPN? Mish, who is Mish? I don't know. What's what's coming on tonight? I'm not sure. You can find them all on ESPN Plus. That's where you need to be. If you guys are watching on Facebook, TikTok, ACL TV, or YouTube, definitely check out ESPN Plus. You will not miss any cornhole action over there. Yep. 6 p.m. shootout singles on ESPN Plus. 7.30 p.m. national doubles. Pro women's doubles on ESPN Plus. And then at 10 p.m. on ESPN Plus, you got shootout doubles. Good push through there from Malvin. Off to the right just a little bit. It's going to be a hard collect for Damon. Right on the pile, Damon knocks in Frank's bag. And that's going to be four more there for Maudlin. So three tournaments going on so far this weekend, Allison, all of them heading to game number two. Is this, is this the theme that we're getting into? It looks like it so far today, yes. And if this goes the same way, Frank's going to win this one. So all of those ESPN Plus broadcasts that we're doing today, you can see later on ESPN2 when they air. And I just got to update on those airings. So shootout singles, 2.30 Eastern time on 4.20. 4.20 shootout doubles, 3.30 Eastern time. 421 national doubles, 9 Eastern time. It was originally 6 Eastern time. So pay no attention to what I just told you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like literally came in as you finished talking about it. ESPN is switching the game for us. Let's go. Big shot there from Double D. He's happy. Who Six won nothing. juniors? Ryan Trader. All the times posted on Eastern Time. Yes, all Eastern Time. Eastern Standard Time. Yep, 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 yep. Modlin misses his landing spot on that one. Slick side down. Let's see if it's going to stop Damon from sneaking around. This is the angle he likes. A little bit higher release, more of a tilt. Bag is away, downward tilt, gets it to go. Damon Dennis has hit that shot for years. Six to two. How long have you been playing cornhole, Wally? I'm um, going about five, six years, I think. 
I don't know if I really count this last year, though. I, I didn't really play. I guess I played once or twice. Yeah, that counts. My week, I guess, yeah. Once or twice a week? I mean, like, recently. Uh, before that, I wasn't really playing much, like, once a month. I guess I would still say I play, though. Yeah. Calvin Tatum for three. Same. Good at it for two. I guess that's still debatable. <laughs> Dad joke's on point, though, that's for sure. Um, sometimes. Zach said, see you next weekend, Wally. Let's go. Where are you going? New Hampshire, I believe. <laughs> the rodeo. The man who coined it doesn't really like it, but that's a Damon Dennis rodeo. Wally with the push through. Nice collect. Sean Dabney wants a shout out. Can I get one? No, sir. Sorry, Sean. <laughs> we do not do shout outs. Thanks for asking. You haven't been saying that bags are being played either. So. Oh, yeah. Uh, Blaine, sorry about that. Bags are being played, Blaine. <laughs> Yeah, mm. It's new to me. It'll, it'll become <laughs> part of my routine in a regular. He said, "Why?" It's, it's just not something we do, Sean Dabney. We're not. We're not that type of. We're not that type of show. Yes. If we did, I would definitely shout you out, Sean Dabney. But not doing it. <laughs> I will not fall victim to this shout out game. Back to the match here, though, 8-2. to two. What? There's cornhole going on? Yeah, I just said bags being played. Did you <laughs> hear me? What are your favorite bags? Cornhole bags. Some people like tea bags. You like? Corey likes tea. You like the actual corn bags? No resin for you? I like the old schools. One-sided duck cloth oh, where the hi. blue breaks in faster than the red for some reason. <laughs> I'm colorblind. They could have been purple. I'm not sure. I used to have some of those, and they got eaten by a squirrel or something. Squirrel. Slide right. Is there enough here day. for Damon to go after this? He's thinking about it. Bag is away. He is going to miss the airmail short and look like a blocker. I'm pretty sure that was an airmail attempt. It just did not go. But luckily, it stays on the board. It's kind of one of those security safety air, air mails. 12 to 2. As Jordan Power makes his way over to the court to watch on. I would love to see a mystery bag tournament. All pros have fun. to use the same type of bag. That would be fun. It should have should have been around, I don't know, eight years ago. That happened at every tournament that you went to. I'm still trying to talk the commission to having a tournament where you're allowed to bring different series of bags. So, for example, you can bring one slide right, one game change, or one evolution to the court if you want, and strategize and mix it up mid-gameplay. That sounds awful. Awfully fun. <laughs> Just think, just think about the bag sales would go through the roof. You have to have them all the same print, though. That's that's the caveat. Bring back the slide rights only. See who wins. I think my husband might come back and play in that tournament. He yeah, loved those would. bags. He's my partner. I call dibs. Yeah, uh, I think that's what he was throwing when he won the singles world championship. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That beautiful airmail. I remember that beautiful bean footage. You remember that airmail? He threw that against Damon Dennis. I, I told him, I said, you have my favorite airmail in the game. I love watching Damon it. Damon looks over and shakes his fist at him like, I'm going to knock you out. <laughs> we need clips. We need a highlight reel of how many times Damon Dennis has either boxed or threatened to fight. <laughs> we, just, we can just turn Damon Dennis into the cornhole villain. Just like, yeah. Papa Brandon agrees James Baldwin would I mean, win that tournament. Damon Dennis is like Hulk Hogan, and if he turns heel, it'd just be amazing.
I'd take Tanner Halber with slide rights. Uh, I think Tanner won his world championship with uh, all slides. Yeah, he loved those blue all slides. Yep. Him and Easy through those blue all slides for, I think, four years. The, be the better question is, why do I know that? Because you went to All Cornhole from the backyard to your pro journey, Allison. You know. That's true. At allcornhole.com. They have you covered. That's how you know. Mm-hmm. Walter, mm-hmm. Walter, number two. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 12-4 to here. Maudlin trying to finish it off nine points away. Berkeley pair with slide rights all day. I, I think mean, Berkeley I mean, think won it, a you, regional last year with slide rights. If you have every bag that's printed the same, so if Damon Dennis had four different we, bags, they all had the same pattern. This? Just think about it. You, hold on. Stay with <laughs> me here. Stay with me. The bag sales would go through the roof, which means we could have more money invested into the live feed so we could have more camera <laughs> angles with new cameras. You're going to have Corey. 42 cameras. You're going to have Chase out here picketing with signs uh, for this more idea now. More chairs, more exciting cornhole action. It'd be fun. It'd be great. Uh oh, that one stays on, but off to the side. I am very excited to see what the broadcast looked <laughs> like today. The moving of the big tournaments, all the finals being played at the Opens rather than at the national tournaments this year. Would we'll love to see what this crowd looks like here in a few hours. I'll be sitting front row with my Ellie t-shirt on. <laughs> Someone on said Jeremiah Ellis. slide rights and humidity. Holy smokes, what a wild ride that would be. Go back to 2017 and watch the Florida National. <laughs> Where we were outside. Good times. Those were the <laughs> days. The commission not so not so thrilled with that. He did not have a good time. I thought that it was a lot of fun being outside. I loved not, it. That's what got me into Cornell. I loved it. It went viral for the wrong reasons. There's the right reason, and there's an awkward knuckle or a punch. <laughs> and here it is. I told you. <laughs> He's getting angry. We got heel Damon Dennis right around the corner. Chat. Stay tuned. Insert dark tint. Actually, that was 2018. You know, Batman sim pow, wham. I mean, we can make we can make this work. Truck, get in, get in on it. Come on, truck. Facts, Brandon. If you smell what Damon's cooking, final boss. Sorry, sorry. Get too far. Well, he's got his mind made up what he wants to do. It's airmail time. Lands on the pile. A little two-for-one trade. He'll take it. Frees up the bag in front. Let's see what he does with bag number four. Or how Maudlin wants to play this now. We might get a back block. Looked like he actually went for the airmail. Landed short. Knocks in double D. Giving him the round, if he could finish off. We're looking at at least 12, 9, maybe more. Oh. How about new? Commentator jinx right there. I did. I did a little bit of that. Only one. You make the hard shot, you miss the easy one. That's mm -hmm. going to be plus one, 12 to 7. Um. Did Jordan Camba win the national in Florida that year throwing slide rights? No. Jordan, get off the bus. Got a question so. for you. Jordan won a doubles national in Florida in 2020, I believe. Sure. They were throwing all slides or game changers. Jamie, that sounds correct. Another bag off to the edge of the red zone from Double D. He's going to take a step out to check the angle. Maudlin, in the meantime, is going to try and bully. He misses the bully. So Damon stepping all the way out, going for the collect here. He 
misses too far to the left. That bag is closer. And it still doesn't free up, wow. Modlin has been very good in the past with these finesse shots. Whoopsie, double D claps it in. Frank Modlin clapping double D for missing and knocking him in apparently, I don't know, that was kind of awkward. Awkward you say, awkward claps. <laughs> Front board, whoopsies had it all. <laughs> Not in a good way. He says, thank you very much for knocking my bag. Hey, no problem, anytime. That's probably really how the conversation went, honestly. I mean, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> round number 10 now. Oh, round 12, sorry. 12 to 8. Get the TikTok camera switched here in a second. Marlon with an opportunity to get two points here. Can he finish? Bag number four in the air, in the hole, plus two for Modlin. Now he is seven points away from getting to 21. One, two, four, seven, carry the two and the three. It's one third of the game left to go. Sunday vibes on Friday. That one's leaning on the edge of the red zone. Off to the left. Can Frank sneak in here? Yes, he can. That time he's able to get that back to fall in the red zone. PPR check. I got gotcha. you. PPR check brought to you here by Miller's Ale House. Eat, drink, stay a while, and enjoy the seniors' action. Damon Dennis throwing a 10.46. Frank Modlin throwing an 11.08. We're 13 rounds in. Good Who? job pushing that one in and replacing the one in front. Damon's pro partner is uh, Mike Ferreira. Has Jeremiah Ellis been practicing at all? <laughs> Got to be careful not to pop a staple. Cut his head open right before broadcast day. Went to the hospital, but he's in good spirits. I don't think that'll slow him down if you know that guy. 
I don't see him. He may be in the other room practicing. Misses that push. I think he was going for a reverse tilt on that one. Looks like Milan's picking up a couple more, 18 to eight. Things starting to get away from him. Through a warm-up match against Frank two years ago in Ventura. Was that Spencer McKenzie's? so far here in round number 15. Oh, the wind is terrible at Spencer McKenzie's. It's crazy out there. It's a different beast of a tournament playing in that. I love it. You love playing in that or you love going to that tournament? I love playing because people think I'm going to suck at it because my bag is like at a tilt. But I actually do the Frank Milan step through, and it helps me stay straight to the hole and cut through the wind. Okay. Just saying. Trevor Brooks in the chat says, Frank Milan has them evolutions dialed in. You ain't lying, brother. He's three points away from taking down a championship. Ready to rock and roll. Three more points, and then that's it for us today, chat. We'll be back tomorrow with doubles action, I believe, 4 p.m. Eastern time. Ish. Somewhere <laughs> around there. Might might come in early. Uh, might, depends might. on how many rounders they're doing, I guess. Might come in late. Who knows? <laughs> depends on how well these broadcasts go tonight. <laughs> might even call off. Jake, get ready. Hop on a plane, brother. Everything down the middle and in here. Damon Dennis needs to go in for the wash. And he will not off to the side. Chat wants to know who you got winning tonight, Wally. Oh, no, 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 no. No free milk. You'll have to tune into my socials to find that information out. I'm going Davis and Sorrells for the shootout doubles. National, got to go Mark and Tony. National singles, whew. Ellis and Hisner playing each other first game. You know, Allison, I don't know if I told Ouch. you that I, I have a special rooting interest this weekend with some of these players that are on broadcast for some reason. Mm. Me too, guys, because uh, you, I picked six. Yeah, you were on fire. Yeah. I now, picked. is that your skill kicking in, or are you just out here following a beautiful logo? Listen. We'll never know. I picked three doubles Frank teams Marlin. and Chance three singles players on fire. to win. Did you pick Frank Milan to win? Because right now he had an opportunity. Five. Misses to the side. Five out of my six won their bracket. So. Killing it. Doing pretty good. This one's got to be in. Beginner's luck. It is going to go in. We're going to continue. It's not beginner's luck. You know what you're doing. You're skilled, skilled veteran. Well, yeah, I, I clearly know the players and all of that, but to pick that many. Yeah, but let's play Let's play I Spy tonight, Allison. Oh, no. We'll, we'll watch all the cornhole players on wanna. broadcast, and we'll see if there's anything that matches on their jersey, maybe a certain logo or something. Might be a giveaway associated with something. But just stay tuned, chat. Stay tuned. National singles, I'm taking Jeremiah Ellis. Shootout, taking Eric Davis. Who are you taking in Boom. this match? Frank Milan or this Damon is Dennis? <laughs> I mean, how cool would it be if Damon Dennis is able this to come is back the game and tie this? Never ends. Force game number round 40. You know, that'd be so cool. He's got it in him. I told you Frank was going to win this one. All of, our, all of our matches went to game two, and whoever was sitting in the king or queen seat Ended up pulling it out in the end. If I'm modeling, I want a back block. Who's up next? We are done after he this. He goes Airmail instead. He hits the first one. He's got one bag left. Forcing Damon with the collect. 
It's off the back of the board. Let's see if Milan goes backside just to keep this game going. On the board basically for the win. He's going to oh. miss off to the side. Now Damon's got a little bit of life here. He's just got to knock him off the board and go in. I haven't seen him pull the shot off yet, but if he's got it in him, why not? Could be worth the risk. Bag is away. Seniors championship on the oh, line. He's no. going to knock him in instead. That was pretty close to actually working. Frank Modlin holds him off in game number two, takes down the seniors championship. Ryan Trader takes down juniors. Sarah Cassidy takes down women's. Frank Modlin takes down the seniors division. That's going to do it here for the first broadcast here in West Wego, Louisiana. Tune in today, ESPN Plus shootout singles at 6 o'clock. We'll see you guys back tomorrow for doubles action again, 4 o'clock Eastern time. We got some stuff we got to sort here. We're going to go over to the broadcast court, have ourselves a good time. I'm Wally Castor from Allison Baldwin and myself and the truck. We'll see you guys tomorrow here in West Wego, Louisiana. Bye-bye.